For the last five years, the Carl Albert Titans have won the state championship, the last two over the Bishop McGinnis Fighting Irish. Tonight, the two meet once again here in Class 5A in a crucial mid-season matchup. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Purple Stadium. Jack Damro with Myron Patton. Ed Murray will join us from the sideline here in just a bit. Myron, when you talk high school football in Oklahoma, it does not get any bigger than these two schools tonight. Yeah, you got two schools that have done a lot of winning state championships on the line. They've helped decide who's going to win 5A the last five years. Tonight, uh, the Carl Albert Titans come in at 3-2, and two, so does Bishop McGinnis. The two schools know a lot about each other. Yeah, they do because they're in district. They play every year, and like I said, they decide who's going to win that championship. And if you're talking Carl Albert, you're talking Buddy Bazell. If you're talking McGinnis, you're talking Michael Taffy. Yeah, this should be a good game tonight. Again, the kickoff is coming up next. Probably need to go to Ed after the kick, right? Before the, before the kickoff? Before the kickoff? They're ready to go, so why don't we go to Ed right after the kick? Right after the kick. We'll go to Ed right after the kick. Let's go to Ed after the kick. Let's let him kick, and then we'll go to Ed. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go to Ed after the kick. Oh, calm, calm down. They are out there too early. Well, welcome back to Purple Stadium as we are underway here between Bishop McGinnis and Carl Albert and the kickoff taken by the Fighting Irish to open up play uh, is taken by an up man and the Irish will have possession to start with here on Friday Night Rivals. Thank you for being with us, Jack Damrell, Myron Patton, Ed Murray. We will go down to Ed here in just a second, but a big matchup here in Class 5A, both these schools at 3-2. and two. And McGinnis will have the football to start with. Their quarterback, River Warren, another sophomore, Myron, as we start play here. River Warren, 6'3", 170. they got to protect him. He's got to cut down on the turnovers if they are to have success against Carl Albert tonight. Yeah, another one of the sophomore quarterbacks. We've had a lot of those guys this season that have turned out to be really good players. And he's the latest. Of course, Luke Tarman was their guy last season for the last couple of seasons, matter of fact, at Bishop McGinnis. But looks like they've got another uh, good one. Mike Taffy will be the running back for the Irish. They will start with Taffy behind Warren and a three wide out set. And here we go. First down and ten here as the game is underway and the handoff goes to Taffy over the right side and he gets a couple of yards on first down. So it'll bring up second down and about eight. Let's go downstairs to Ed Murray. Ed, good evening. Almost twice a year sometimes. I talk to both coaches. There are no surprises. They know how they're going to line up. They know the plays are going to run. So cliches become reality. Whichever team plays the cleanest, both coaches told me, no pre-snap penalties. And, uh, of course, the turnover is a big part. And the wind may play a big factor. Going right to left on your screen and it's pretty tough out there. 
Jack. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Ed. Second down and eight now for the Irish. Here is the handoff to Taffy right back up the middle, and he's going to be met quickly at the line of scrimmage. May have got about a yard. It'll bring up third down and long now for the Irish. Tanner Norman along with Charles Fleming up front for the defensive uh, front for the Titans, along with Karan Howard and Isaiah Reed. They're pretty good offensive or defensively up front, Myron. The uh, Titans are. And now it's third down and long, third down and five for Bishop McGinnis. Yeah, they know dealing with Taffy is going to be the number one target tonight and how they can control him. Here's the third down play, and Warren gets the Titans to jump off sides. Isaiah Reed, the senior defensive end, someone that they rely on heavily defensively, steps off sides, and so they will pick up a first down via the penalty. And so it's first down for the Fighting Irish. That is an Otro, uh, that is an Oklahoma Ford dealer's first down. Here is the offense for Bishop McGinnis. They are led by River Warren along with Mike Taffy, Paul Tarman. We're going to call his name a lot tonight as well as a wideout. And then you have Andrew Smith, Kellen Frell, and the tight end is Hank Garrett. Four wideouts into the game now for McGinnis. First down and 10 from the 41. Warren to pass. It is caught over the middle for a first down and tackled right at the first down marker is his receiver, and that is Andrew Smith, and he is going to pick up a first down. It is an Oklahoma four dealers first down. Yeah, it's a pretty good protection. Get above the ball real fast and just found a seam there. Took a big hit here, but hung on to it as the first down. Going to talk about the history between these two programs, Myron. It doesn't get any better than this. The last two state championships in 5A played by these two schools. They play each year, obviously, in the regular season. Carl Albert, of course, has won the state title the last five years. Here's the handoff to Taffy. Gets through, breaks one tackle, gets out near the 40-yard line. It's a good run of about eight yards. It'll bring up second down and short now for Bishop McGinnis, who is on the move here on their opening drive. And Taffy's look pretty good. Nice little body lane there. And, of course, for a number of years they had Dominic Richardson, who's doing the same thing. He's in his second season at Oklahoma State. In fact, I would think Nick Nick is here somewhere. Cowboys have the weekend off. I bet he's somewhere here watching this game very closely. And this is a young Irish team, really. Taffy, only a junior, six foot 205, takes the handoff to the left side, has the first down and more across the 35 and down to the 31-yard line. It is another Oklahoma Ford dealer's first down, and the Irish on a good opening drive here to start the ball game. Yeah, the offensive line's done a good job getting a lot of push up front. Of course, this drive started out with one of those pre-snap penalties that Ed Murray talked about that they wanted to stay away from. Got him a first down, but the offensive line is, is moving back that call out in front so far. First down and 10. They spotted at the 31. Ball on the far hash mark. River Warren, only a sophomore, 6'3", 170 pounds. And here's a handoff to Taffy. Working left, gets outside, down the sideline, gets another first down across the 20. They're going to say right at the 20-yard line. That is right at the first down marker. Let's see if they give it to him, and I believe they will. Or will, is it going to bring up second down and short? Let's check it first. They've not moved the chains yet. It looked like he got it, but uh, we don't have the best. Well, and now they now, are moving yep. the chains. Now they're going to give it to him. Another Oklahoma four dealers first down. Taffy coming into tonight, 937 yards on the ground and 18 touchdowns on the ground. Definitely their leader. First down and 10 from the 20. Here is the handoff. Right back up the middle. He's got some room. Carries a tackler or two. On his way to the 11-yard line. Close to a first down, and I believe he got it again. Two consecutive runs by Taffy. Two consecutive first downs. And let's check the... Let's check it again. What a great run by Taffy this time. Yeah, he's got a nice seam. Now the offensive line, again, just giving him a room. Of course, he's got good leg drive. He's about 215, so he's a pretty big kid. Only a junior. And so... Uh, we can see why he's got almost 1,000 yards already this season. Six rushes, 47 yards so far on this opening drive for Mike Taffy. First down and 10 from the 11. Taffy again back up the middle, and he's going to get about four yards on that carry. It'll bring up second down and about six, and Taffy's slow and getting up. This could be interesting if hopefully he is not hurt. It looks like actually... He got something maybe in his eye or his helmet came off, and he's going to have to come out of the ballgame. Well, I think uh, we know what McGinnis is going to do. It's going to be a heavy dose of Michael Taffy tonight, and uh, he's going to get a lot of action tonight. He's been very successful. If they don't score here, I'll bet he'll be back out there the next play. He's not happy about something. 
He does not look to be hurt, but it looked like his helmet may have come off at the very end of the play or maybe got something in his eye. Not sure. They're looking at something. The trainers are for Bishop McGinnis, but actually that's his head coach, Brian Pierce, talking to him. Second down and seven after the gain of three. Ball is on the eight-yard line. They can get a first down at the one. Here is the handoff, and McGinnis is going to get called for illegal procedure. They had an end that was moving before the snap, and so this is going to be a five-yard penalty against Bishop McGinnis. There you see our referee tonight, Doug Crop, and his crew. Sideline warning for Carl Albert. Well, I take that back. I'm completely wrong. I saw the end. It might have been Paul Tarman who moved early, but they did not catch that, and so a sideline warning for against Carl Albert. Yeah, a little bit unusual because they're inside the 10, and the Carl Albert players are back up at the 25, 25 30. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Third down, six for McGinnis. Warren to pass, looking for the corner of the end zone, and he overthrows his receiver in the corner, and he was looking for Andrew Smith. Nice little corner route. He had his man beat. Just a little bit more air underneath it. Uh, just overthrew him. Throwing into a strong wind as well. Good good pass. Just could not come up with uh, the senior wide receiver. Taffy is back into the ball game for the Irish on fourth down and sixth. They're going to go for it. Three wideouts to the near side, including Taffy. Warren out of the shotgun. Takes a snap, looking toward the end zone. Now he'll run with it. Now he'll pass it, and he's got his receiver touchdown. Touchdown, Bishop McGinnis. It's a good play on the quarterback part. I, I want to see where he let that ball go, but was, he was going to run and then found Taffy uh, just as he's about to really put it in high gear for the touchdown. I assume he did not cross the line of scrimmage, though. It is a Homeland Grocery touchdown. Homeland Grocery, your homegrown advantage. Let's take a look at it again, Myron. You thought yeah. he was going to run with it. There you go. And then yeah. he just kind of tossed it right there, and Taffy was waiting right on the inside the end zone. It's only right Taffy get that touchdown. He did most of the work to get him down there. 6 nothing. The point after, a failed point after attempt for the Irish, and Carl Albert was in the backfield before, before they could even get the snap down. Early on here, the big McGinnis fighting Irish up 6 nothing. I guess we see why they didn't go for the uh, field goal. I don't know how to turn. Hey, Howard, is there any way they can turn you down in my set? Here's keys that I turned into. Oh. oh. I mean, this is. Oh my gosh, you're so loud in my ear; it's 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 killing me. Welcome back to the O Triple C Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week: Carl Albert against Bishop McGinnis. Let's talk about keys to the game, Myron. Obviously, when you have won five straight ch uh, championships. You've won 16 in the history of the program. You have a pedigree that's pretty special. Yeah, you know how to play in big, uh, in big games. And of course, uh, get Kentrell Bazell, Buddy Bazell, they like to call him involved. He's a big player for them. Limit mistakes. We saw them, uh, you know, penalties, interceptions. McGinnis has had problems with that throughout the, uh, the season. Limit those. And, of course, Michael Taffy. We see why you want to get him involved. That one drive says, yes, make sure he gets plenty of touches. And on that one drive, he had 53 total yards, seven rushes, one reception, a touchdown. Very special kid. Here is Will Kilgallen to kick it away for the Irish. Back deep, Quincy Hopkins and Marion Brown for Carl Albert on the Ortho Central kickoff. Ortho Central, it's in our bones to take care 
of yours. And here is Kilgallen into a stiff wind, and he's going to just line drive it, and it goes out of bounds. Maybe OU should take some <laughs> advice from that kick, right, after last week's uh, kickoff return. Let's look at uh, Carl Albert's offensive lineup as they take over. Illegal procedure called against McGinnis on the kickoff. And so Carl Albert will take it at the 35-yard line, actually because the ball went out of bounds. So instead of it at the 30, it'll be at the 35. They are led by Reed DeQuazy. A lot of people might remember that name, DeQuazy, a long football standing tradition in the DeQuazy family. Kentrell Bazell, as we've been talking about, wide receivers to Marion Brown, to Sean James, Xavier Thomas, and Mason Lutz. Here is the first down and 10 play from the 35. DeQuazy with the handoff to Bazell, and he's up over the middle to the 30, 40, 39 yard line. It's a gain of four, second down and six. Let's talk about the defense for Bishop McGinnis. There you see along the defensive front, they are very good. Chancellor, Shivers, Hauser, and Watts, pretty big up front defensively. Then the linebackers, Jacobs, Rice, and Shadid. And then in the backfield, Ketchum. In the secondary, Ketchum, Spainer, Chumo, and Frail. Well, we'll see how uh, Carl Albert responds. That was a really good, impressive drive by McGinnis to open things up. We'll see how the Titans can uh, respond. They've been playing pretty good, some pretty good football the last couple of weeks. Second down and six. DeQuazy calls his own number, trying to get outside. Has some running room. Cuts it up on the corner and actually gets a first down, it looks like. They're going to say he went out of bounds at around the 46. It is an Oklahoma four dealers. First down. Mike Dunn there in his first year. He's behind uh, the guy with the headset. Mike, come on out. Red <laughs> cap. Quit trying to hide. There you are. Played for the state championship Titans back from 97 to 2002 when they won five in a row back then. And came over from Dell City, of course, where he was successful as a head coach at Dell City as well. Here is the handoff to Baz- or Actually, DeQuazy's going to keep it himself. And he gets out over the middle, almost to midfield. It's a gain of about three. It brings up second down and seven. There you see Brian Pierce, the head coach for Bishop McGinnis, in his 14th year as head coach, but his 18th season here at Bishop McGinnis High School. Carl, I've got a heck of a win at Guthrie last week. Had the Blue Jays their first loss. Won it with four seconds left, if I remember right. Here's the second down play. Bazell, there is a flag down across midfield into McGinnis territory, but let's check the flag back at the line of scrimmage. Sideline warning against Bishop McGinnis. So everybody gets one now. (laughs) And generally they call that when... An official is running down the sidelines, you know, and he runs into a player or something that's too close to the line of scrimmage. That's why the, the early one against Carl Albert was kind of interesting because the ball's inside the 10. The team seemed to be back up yeah. further up the field, but obviously somebody was in the way, and they get a warning. No, no penalty that first time. Third down and five for the Titans. Just past midfield at the McGinnis 49-yard line. Here is DeQuazy. Hands off to Bazell. Looking for some running room outside. He's got the corner. He's also got the line. Down to the 20, to the 15, to the 10. Touchdown, Carl Albert. I'd say that's a pretty good response. Buddy Bazell always says, I've been following Carl Albert for a lot of years doing high school football. There's always a Bazell on the team. A 49-yard touchdown run for Bazell. His sixth touchdown of the season. It is a Homeland Grocery touchdown. Homeland Grocery, your homegrown advantage. And Myron, when he got to the outside, he was gone. Yeah, he just turned on the Jets. It just became a foot race, and he doesn't lose a lot of those. He's not going to lose it there. And they're an extra point away from taking the lead. Here is the kick. The point after is up, and it is good. The point after taken by Aiden Wood. And so the Titans have responded with a touchdown of their own, and they lead midway through the first quarter, 7-6. to six. We're back with this right after this on Friday Night Rivals.
Uh, it's okay, I guess. Well, tit for tat. Welcome back, everyone, to Pribble Stadium on the campus of Bishop McGinnis High School. The Titans with an early 7-6 lead over Bishop McGinnis as the Titans will kick off after the Bazell touchdown and a good kickoff with the win taken at the one-yard line. And it's returned out to about the 14 by River Ward. Well, here in the early going, we've seen the players we talked about needing to play well, play well. Michael Taffy for McGinnis. Buddy Bazell for Carl Albert. Which team can take the other opponent's main guy out or limit their uh, effectiveness? Maybe a better way to put it because I don't know if you can just take them out, but uh, <laughs> can, you, can you slow them up a little bit? It was a host of Taffy on the last drive, on the opening drive. Started as high school career actually at Millwood as a freshman then came over to McGinnis last season and now as a junior for the Fighting Irish gets the carry on first down and actually going to lose a yard so it's second down and 11 big play up front by Charles Fleming well if you call Albert did you see something that maybe you can change on that first drive Second down and 11. Here is River Warren changing the play, looking over to his sideline. And now a timeout has been called, and Carl Albert wants to take a timeout. You know, you talk about two programs as we keep it here. We talk about two programs, Myron, that have played for the state title the last two years. They played each other in the state title for what of the last six years, I believe, and all have gone Carl Albert's way. You know, they've played each other since 2004, 18 times. 4-12 and 12 is the record. McGinnis, during the season, they've won some games this season. They get to the playoffs, and Carl Albert's a different story. Yeah, yeah, and that's what they've been able to do is win it, uh, in, in the playoffs. And both teams have had big time uh, in, in the scores, 30-21, 30-15, 35-23, 34-29. You know, the, over the last several years when Carl Albert has won these state championship matchups, yeah. they've been a better team. Of course, you've had some big-time players at both places. Uh, but it's one of those things, if you're a McGinnis fan, they've been the thorn in your side. They've yeah. kept you from winning state championships Yep, is what they've done. Because there's no doubt McGinnis would probably have one or two or three state championships had they not played Carl Albert. Yes, yes. McGinnis won their state titles back in 06 and 07. They've won back-to-back -back titles too, so they know how to win a state championship as well. We're back to action, second down and 11. Warren takes a snap, dropping back to pass, is in trouble, breaks a tackle. His pass is caught out near the 20-yard line and near the first down marker goes Paul Tarman, a senior wide out, and he gets the first down. It is a Homeland Grocery first down. Nice pass and catch. Yeah, Luke Tarman, uh, his brother, was the quarterback last season. Little brother still there. And I'm impressed with the quarterback, too, man. He, when he runs, he's not just running to run. He's still looking downfield, and you, that's the second time you've seen him. I'm running. Oh, there's a receiver. Yeah. Let him uh, make the play. That's pretty impressive for a sophomore. Two in the backfield now with Warren. Taffy, the deep back. And a bad snap, and Warren took his eyes off of it and was trying to Looked like he was trying to hand it off before he even had the ball, and it's a loss of several yards, almost 10. Let's see, might be even more than that, and just threw his hands. Yeah, just threw his hands, and, you know, it's one of those plays. Now you're in long yard situations. I mean, 
you, I won't say you had a good drive going, but you'd moved it out from the shadow of your goal post. Yep. Now you're in a bit of a trouble here. We'll see if they can get out of it. A loss of 10, second down and 20. Just over, over three minutes to play here in the opening quarter from Bishop McGinnis High School. Glad to have you along on a, what a, once again, we're getting lucky, beautiful high school football night here in Oklahoma. Midway through the season, halfway through October. Can you believe it's this hot outside? I know. Some are trying to hang on. Here is Warren. Nice pa uh, pass and a nice catch for a first down to Tarman. On the left side, he gets near the 35, the 34. It's going to be just a yard shy of the first down marker. Let's take a look. Here it is. Nice. That is a heck of a pass. He put it right in the window. You had two to each side, one behind. If that's off left or right or too high, that's picked off. And so much for we're in a hole at second <laughs> and long. Yeah. Third down and one after that 19-yard pass completion. A handoff to Taffy, running left, gets the first down and gets pushed out. Near the 37, 38 yard line it is a Oklahoma Ford dealer's first down. Taffy keeps the chains moving for the Fighting Irish. Yeah, and that's one of those, you know, if you if you get backed up, then you gotta punt the ball. Carl I was gonna get good field position. I don't know if they score on this drive, but at least I won't say they flip the field, but uh, if you do punt Call I was going to have a ways to go to get a touchdown or a score or even a field goal. Made up for that bad snap. Here's the first down play. Taffy takes the handoff, has some room right back up the middle, and he falls forward to the 46-yard line. Boy, good-looking running back so far tonight. Yeah, he is. He is, uh, like I said, he's only a junior, but uh, good vision. Doesn't mind lowering that shoulder, picking up some tough yards. Nice tackle by Demarion Brown in the secondary for the Titans. And everybody knows he's going to get the ball. That's, <laughs> that's what makes it even more frustrating for your defender. Here is Taffy again. Runs into his own player and is going to be tackled from behind. Nice pursuit that time by the defense for Carl Albert. Karan Howard along with Brock Johnson in on the stop for the Titans. And it's third down and three now for the Fighting Irish. Carl Albert's defense has come along the last few weeks. They've gotten some guys back who were out early. And it's really shown. I mean, that's, uh, like I said, they picked up their play. You could tell like, the win at Guthrie was huge. Here's the third down snap. Warren's pass is broken up at the line of scrimmage by Isaiah Reed. He is all over the place defensively for the Titans this season, coming in with 24 tackles and has already had several passes broken up, and he has another one right there, and now it's fourth down, and they're going to kick it away. Yeah, you couldn't get there for the sack, so you do the next best thing, knock the pass down. And they're in punting situation, but as I said, at least they've got, uh, they're not backed up inside, say they're on 10 where they're punting. Will Kilgallen averaging 34 yards a kick, back to punt it away. Gets a good kick into a strong win, and it will bounce at the 30 yard line and takes a little Irish bounce. And it will be down to around the 27. So the Titans take over with their second possession of the game with just under a minute to play. In the opening quarter, game moving along fairly quickly, but that's what, what happens when you have two running games going after each other. Yes, they eat up. The, the, the clock keeps running. Uh, McGinnis has had some passing a little bit, but uh, it's mainly been Michael Taffy versus uh, Kendrell Bazell here in the first quarter. With a little Reed to Quasi mixed in. First down 10 for the Titans from the 27. Here is Reed DeQuazy looking to pass, throwing right, and he gets it complete down the sideline. Goes his receiver, Trey Washington, into the end zone. Touchdown, Carl Albert. It's a heck of a catch. I had to pause and hesitate because I thought it might have had a chance to get picked off. Well, the corner did step in front, but couldn't quite get high enough to at least knock it down. There you see right there over his head. And there's nothing but green grass and a foot race in front of him. And just like Bazell earlier, he doesn't lose those. And Trey Washington, a freshman wideout 
with his second touchdown receiving of the season. And here is the point after by Aiden Wood to make it 14-6, and it is up, and it is good. And so the Titans had a huge touchdown and now lead it 14-6 with 30 seconds to play in the opening quarter. It's a good-looking freshman there. Wow, tell you what. Make a play like that. We saw C.J. Simon and Moore last week who was a freshman. Well, I guess we got to put another on the list again. Here it is, yeah. Just over his head, and then, but the hands to pull that down, strong hands you got to have there, and then it's just a foot race. And try, 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 you're not going to catch him. Well, it also helps he's also six foot three as a freshman. Yeah. I would love to have been 6'3 as a freshman. It took me almost 50 years to become 6'3, Myron. I'm still trying to get there, so I don't want to hear anything about trying to, you, how long it took you to get there. In high school, I was all but 5'10. Well, what we've seen is Carl Albert is big playing McGinnis. Yeah. You know, they've, they've gotten the big run by Bazell, the big catch and run there, so they've been able to get some, uh, some big plays to take this lead. This has not been a low-scoring series in the history of this rivalry between the Irish and the Titans. I believe when I went to average it up earlier today doing some prep for the game, Myron, it was like the average score was 41 to 25. A lot of points put on the scoreboard by these two schools. So you're saying take the over if you're, the, if you're, the, if you're into that, you know. No doubt about it. Here's the kick by the Titans on the Ortho Central kickoff. Good kick. Bobbled at the goal line. And here we go. Return back up the middle out to the 20-yard line. Goes Tyrell Bruder. Actually make that uh, Noah Rice. And so the Irish have it with about 24 seconds left to go. I thought he might have made a mistake you know, running that out when he kind of bobbled it, but uh, at least got back to the 20. And so we'll see how McGinnis responds. You know, one thing in that first drive, they had ball control. They kept Carl Albert's offense off the field. They may want to see if they can get that going again because the two times they've had it, they've gotten big plays. That being Carl Albert, that is, have gotten big plays right. to take this lead. Here's the first down play for Bishop McGinnis. The handoff to Taffy. Cuts it upfield across the 25-yard line, a gain of five. Second down and five is that will probably bring the first quarter to an end. Good entertaining first quarter so far. Both schools with some quick long drives. Good look there at Mike Taffy. So the Titans take the first quarter lead 14 to 6. Let's go downstairs to Ed Murray. Well, guys, each week the Oklahoma, Triple, Oklahoma City Community College presents a charitable donation of $500 to our host team and accepting on behalf of Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School, Principal and President David Moore. Awesome. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. We love hosting tonight. What a great, great atmosphere. Great to be out playing football on Friday night. So Especially with the 5A state champion cheerleaders right here. All right, Jack. All right. Thank you very much, Ed. All right, let's take a break. Into first quarter here on Friday Night Rivals. The Titans up 14-6. Second quarter right after this. It's better, so. <clears throat> so far, some, good, some good highlights. Yeah. How do you go for a touchdown on that? How do you even catch that? Yeah, he's got some strong hands. Yeah. He's only, he just he didn't. It wasn't like right here. No. He was it wasn't like, a good pass at all. Yeah. Interview. Okay. Okay. Gotcha.
That was the O uh, Triple C interview before the game, correct? Okay. All right, gotcha. I do not like these black numbers. It's hard for me to see them. Oh, the jerseys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's not a dimmer on these, are, is there, Brian? Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's not a dimmer, though. Okay. You're watching Oklahoma City Community College Friday Night Rivals live on CW34, presented by GMC. Welcome back for the start of the second quarter. Ed Murray had a chance to speak with OCCC representatives before the game. Ed? The admission outreach advisor, Xavier Jackson. And Xavier OCCC stepped in to be our main sponsor for Friday Night Rivals. Really not knowing what to expect. What's the experience been like from an OCCC perspective? Standing by. Well, it's been wonderful getting to see the students and having such a great time. What, what's it like to see these students you throw that stuff up to them? I mean, this crowd really loves it. Oh, yeah, they love it. All the free stuff, all the hats, it's crazy. How would they become a student at OCCC once they leave Bishop McGinnis or Carl Albert or anywhere? Well, it's really simple. You just go to www.occcc.edu and you fill out our free application. We don't have any admissions requirements as far as GPA or ACT scores or anything like that, so it's pretty simple. How many degrees are some of the degrees that you have to offer? So some of our marquee degrees are nursing. We also have digital cinema production as well as automotive technology. What's the cost to go to OCCC? It's actually really affordable. It's less than $5,000 a year. All right, look right into the camera and tell a student why they should make OCCC their college home. Well, if you care about your community, if you want to get a really valuable, affordable education, definitely check out OCCC. All right, hire the man. He's great. Back up to the booth. All right, on third down and 10, here is River Warren stepping up to pass. His pass is caught by Tarman down the sideline. May have got close to the first down marker. Let's see where they gave it to him, Myron, but... It's going to be awfully close to a first down, and I believe he got it. Yeah, it looks like they're marking where he got it. It is. They're going to give him a first down. It is an Air National Guard first down. Air National Guard. The Air National Guard part-time blue, full-time U. First down from the 31 for the Fighting Irish after about an 11-yard pickup. River Warren with a lot of confidence and a lot of uh, poise back there, not rushing when he gets pushed out of the pocket. Here he goes again. Steps up. Throws it long down the field. Has his receiver Tarman again. This time too long. He was in stride though with Demarion Brown on the coverage and it's second down and 10. And they've got a lot of confidence in him, um, River Warren, to uh, you know allow him to throw it down the field. Of course, Tarman seems one, one of his favorite targets out there. Maybe had a step on him, but just hold it through it. You'd rather be overthrown than underthrown. Uh, but you know, picking up that last first down, they were in a long yardage situation. And if you're Carl Albert, you thought you had a chance to get that ball back with some momentum. Second down and 10. Taffy, the deep back, takes the handoff. Gets back up the middle across the 35 to the 36 on a run of about five yards. It is now third down and five for Bishop McGinnis. Big matchup in Class 5A midway through the high school season. We have, what, three more weeks of our broadcast, right, Myron, after tonight? Yeah, and, uh, of course, it's the third week of district play. These two teams tied atop at 2-0. and Somebody's going to at least take control at least up to this point halfway through district play. Third down snap. Taffy. Dives to the 40-yard line, and he's going to be about a yard short. So it will be fourth down and one for the Fighting Irish. Stay tuned for the Wade's RV Halftime Report. We'll showcase this week's McIntyre Law Scholar athletes and have a conversation with our participating school administrators, plus Thursday Night Lights and Friday Night Rival highlights from across the country. All that, including first-half highlights and more, coming up on the Wade's RV Halftime Report. Fourth down and one for the Irish. Warren changing the play, moves Taffy to his right. Here is the handoff to Taffy. 
and I am not sure he got it. I, don't I think believe he did. the Titans, uh, along that defensive front led by Brock Johnson, the sophomore defensive end, may have stopped him. Well, it's going to be close. I'm looking at they're marking it. This may be a measurement at the very least. So they say he got it. And they're going to give it to him. Wow. Initially, it did not look like he got it. It is a first down, an Air National Guard first down for Bishop McGinnis. Well, if you didn't get that, you're, you're really in some trouble there, the way they've uh, been able to score. But it also shows the confidence they have in their line and, and Taffy to pick up that first down in your own territory. Frell to the right of Warren. Taffy, the deep back, takes, fakes the play action. His pass is caught across the 40 for a first down. And out around the 35 is his receiver. The pass is caught by Noah Rice. And there is a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Let's check to see what it is after you see the play again to Noah Rice. He just finds a window right there and puts it right where it has to be. Looks like it's going to come back. It's going to be holding against Bishop McGinnis. So negate the play. So it's first down and 20 now for the Fighting Irish back around the 31-yard line. They overcame this earlier in the first quarter for first and 20 and uh, end up scoring a touchdown on the drive. We'll see if they can do it again. And in their two losses, both teams have lost to Dell City, but in McGinnis's losses against uh, Coweta and Dell City, Brian Pierce talked about it. They had too many mistakes, too many interceptions by the quarterback, too many penalties that led to drive stalling out. And here we see the holding that pushed it back after the first down pass play. Here is Warren being chased out of the pocket, looking to pass. Now he'll tuck it under and is going to be dropped back around the uh, line of scrimmage at the 31-yard line. Had nowhere to run. Good pursuit that time by Bazell, who goes both ways. And you see why he's a D1 college prospect. Well, and just to get back to the line of scrimmage instead of taking the big loss is is pretty good <laughs> because it looked like he was going to be sacked. And you're right, Bazell was right there breathing down his neck. Carl Albert's got it where you want them is where it's second and long, and they've got to see if they can come up with a big play to get out of this hole. Second down and 20. Three wideouts now for the Irish. Here's the handoff to Taffy. Running left. Breaks one tackle. Breaks another. Jumps outside around to the 40-yard line. Good run that time. Gets about nine yards back before he's tackled in the secondary. Got a little jump cut here where he gets right here, and then he says, well, let me go sideways, get some more yards. Easton Harless on the tackle for the Titans. It is now third down and 11 passing situation for the Irish. Three to the wide side, including Taffy. Two to the near side. Five wideouts into the game for Bishop McGinnis. And a whistle, and Carl Albert wants another timeout, so... They did not like what they saw with a five wide out set for the Irish, and Mike Dunn called a timeout. Yeah, he wants to get them off the field here. He thinks his offense can do something here. And so third and about 11. I'm going to try to draw it up and see if they can get uh, McGinnis off the field. Stay tuned in the fourth quarter as we will select the OCCC play of the game. OCCC, college is great. Crushing debt is not. Now, which one of these hats did you wear in high school? <laughs> uh, it would be the uh, baseball hat. Baseball oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, not, not the cowboy hat. But not backwards. I, not I, wore backwards. Mine, I wore mine forwards. Oh, come on. My, my parents would not let me wear it backwards. Uh, they didn't let you wear No. Okay. Uh, they, I had strict parents. Well, his apparently. parents may not know. He's got it on backwards. <laughs> he's on TV. They know now, but <laughs> yeah. they probably didn't know. No, my mom and dad would be laughing. I wore my hat however I wanted. I was a baseball player for a little while and then turned to the other football English football. The round football? Yeah. That'd be soccer. I don't feel something like this. A little bit wider, bigger. Yeah. In fact, this field was used by the Energy back in 2013 when they opened up, remember, mm -hmm. Purple Stadium, home of the Energy for several years. Yeah. Had the, had the uh, pleasure to broadcast them over the first four years. This was a great venue for them. Great high school venue, by the way. Beautiful stadium. Here is the third down play. 
Strong pass that time by Warren. Caught for the first down over the middle. Breaks a tackle to the 40, to the 35, down to the 30, to the 20, and tackled from behind goes Tarman. A huge pickup for Bishop McGinnis and a first down. Well, McGinnis said we got some big playability also, and that was a really good catch by Tarman. He's going to have to – this ball's humming. A lot of juice on it, all hands, and then says, I'll make a guy miss there, and then I'll make it a foot race, and though he doesn't get all the way, it's a big first down, big play for the Irish. And he was brought down from behind by Xavier Thomas, the senior cornerback who saved a touchdown for Carl Albert. 43-yard pass completion to Tarman. First down and 10 from the 17. The handoff to Taffy, back up the middle, has got some room, touchdown, Bishop McGinnis. A Homeland Grocery touchdown for the Fighting Irish. Homeland Grocery, your homegrown advantage, 14 to 12, just like that. A great response by the Fighting Irish. The response you want, and of course Taffy finishes off the drive straight up the middle, but obviously the big third down conversion, the big play by Tarman set that up, and what it does is serves notice that we came to play, Carl Albers come to play, this is going to be a game decided late. Here is Kilgallen, another botched point after, and that'll just drive a coach crazy as they can't even get the snap off, and so it remains 14 to 12 midway through the second quarter. Let's watch the bobble again, second one tonight, and they had no chance. Low snap, and the holder just did not have a chance. Let's take a break on Friday Night Rivals. McGinnis with the touchdown. 14 to 12 our score. right there they yeah. can't kick anything yeah you got to start going for two points now Tappy basically. 17 for 97 yards two touchdowns wow he's looking nice game okay he's looking at a 30 plus carry game uh if you guys can find number one mike taffy we're going to focus on him coming back okay 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 Welcome back, everyone, on the OCCC Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week. Jack Dammer, Myron Pat, Ed Murray from Pribble Stadium on the campus of Bishop McGinnis High School. 14-12 in what we knew would be a good game between these two historic programs. And so far, Myron, they have lived up to the billing. They have not disappointed at all. And, of course, uh, players that we're going to be keying on, they've definitely done their job in terms of big playabilities for both Carl Albert and McGinnis with uh, Michael Taffy starting off uh, what's going to be a busy night for him. One issue, though, is, they, is McGinnis has not kicked an extra point yet, yet, and that's going to come into play whether they start going for two or yeah. need a field goal, whatever. Here is Kilgallen, and his kick goes into the end zone. It will be a touchback. Big kick with the wind on the Ortho Central kickoff. Let's see the touchdown set up again first on the big pass play to Paul Tarman. Yeah, this is third and 11, and you know, he makes a guy miss there. Of course, great hands first to catch it. And this kept that drive going. Otherwise, they're going to have to punt. That and was a 43-yard pickup, and then Taffy finishes it. Yeah, he and he's having a busy night. He's already near 100 yards, 17 carries, 97 yards, the one touchdown reception, and then the touchdown run. So he's working on a big, big night. And of course, we've got a player of the game we've got to keep an eye out for. We sure do. Here is Carl Albert. On the first play, pass almost picked off. It was almost picked off by Rice. And so it's now second down and 10. And when you look at offensively, Myron, 27 offensive plays for Bishop McGinnis, only now six for Carl Lauer. Well, and, but that's because they've gotten the big plays. I mean, you know, the, the Bazell run, you know, that uh, was cross country. I mean, they, they've scored quick. McGinnis, 
is ball control, which is probably to keep the ball out of uh, Carl Albert's hands because they show they can do something with it. So we'll see which style works. Put points on the board first and foremost, no matter how long it takes or how short it takes. Second down and 10. Here is DeQuazy. And he's going to keep it himself, and he runs it up across the 25 to the 26. So it's a gain of about seven yards. Third down and three now for the Titans. At the conclusion of tonight's game, we will select our GMC player of the game. And as Myron said, we have a couple who are putting their name in the hopper for that. Both sides. Yeah. You know, vying for that. And, you know, Reed DeQuaze is the quarterback. He's he's kind of a patient runner, you know. he's And he showed earlier that uh, he's got some speed to him. But, you know, he's kind of patient, looking for the hole, looking for the, the opening. And he gets you five, six yards. So he's a, he's a nice-looking quarterback as well. Last week against Guthrie in the win against Guthrie, 220 yards, or actually against Guyman, excuse me, a couple weekends ago, 220 yards. Here is Bazell up over the middle, and he is not going to gain anything. It's now fourth down, and the Titans will kick it away, and the Irish can take advantage of a good defensive stop. Yeah, they had him in the Wildcat formation trying to get that first down, but there was nowhere to run. They did a good job stacking that up, and so now they got a punt, something they don't do a lot of. And uh, we'll see what Bishop McGinnis can do. You saw big number 88 for the Irish, Brady Hauser, in on the stop to bring the fourth down play. And here is Trey Washington to punt for Carl Albert. Standing back around his 15-yard line, line drive kick, and he gets a great bounce from the 45 and it bounces and rolls all the way down to the 25-yard line. So he got about a 15-yard bounce after the uh, initial kick, and then there is a flag back around the 45-yard line. Let's see what this is. It's going to go, they say, it looks like against Bishop McGinnis, holding on the Irish. So that uh, kick even becomes better. <laughs> and so, uh, And it'll show up as a, as a punt. But uh, got a lot of roll on that in terms of yardage uh, that helped it out. So now, you see, they're going to back him up. A and kicker will get the yards however they want, right? Hey. He'll, he'll take a bounce of You look at the 15, stat yeah. sheet. It said I averaged 45 yards <laughs> a punt. Didn't say how I got it. Didn't say it was in the air. That's just what the numbers say. So the penalty takes it back to the 15. So the Irish will start first down at 10 from their 15. Trailing 14 to 12, midway through the second quarter, and a fast-moving affair so far. We have not even played what an hour. Mike Taffy in the backfield, play action fake. Warren looking to pass, throws it down the field, caught over the middle, wide open around the 30-yard line. Is his receiver. And that is Andrew Smith, the senior wide out, getting the first down catch for the Irish, who have seemed to have found something here in the second quarter. Again, he does a great job looking up the field. He's running. He's not just running for his life. He's looking for a receiver, and he seems to find one. He has at least three times tonight doing that. An Air National Guard first down for Bishop McGinnis from the 34-yard line. Warren hands off to Taffy, running left, has some room, gets a block across the 45, and out to the 47, ran right past Paul Tarman. There is a flag, though, back around the 37-yard line, and this is going to be coming back, a hold probably against Bishop McGinnis. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, still a, run, a nice run by Taffy, but he won't get the yardage there. Everybody's walking backwards. Somebody had a, a handful of shirt, jersey, or whatever. Referee Doug Crop making the call. So it's first down and 20 now for Bishop McGinnis. Ball back at the 24-yard line. Well, that's not been a bad situation. Two drives have had that. They've, they've scored touchdowns on each drive. Here is River Warren looking to pass again. Caught by Tarman, and no, he drops the football. Yes, he's as fast as had all night. <laughs> Ed Murray got a good look at him. Ed was right in front of him. And, Ed, good-looking play right there. It was. Uh, Paul Tarman, by the way, 
is just back with the team. Two weeks ago, he recovered from COVID and lost 22 pounds. Looks like he's back to pretty good strength as he's overcoming that and really getting himself back into football shape. Wow, great news there. 22 pounds, gosh. That's, that's a lot. Yeah, no doubt about it. Here's the handoff to Taffy right back up the middle. He gets nothing. It'll bring up third down and long now for the Fighting Irish. Well, let's see. They've, they've overcome third and long twice. Tarman was the, the guy the last drive that had the 43-yard catch and run. We'll see if they can pull out their hat or if uh, Carl Albert can get some pressure and maybe uh, force a turnover. We have not had a turnover in this game yet. Tarman and Taffy to the bottom of your screen. Warren looking right, looking long, and he throws it into coverage, and it's incomplete. It brings up fourth down. He was, there is a pos, there's a flag, no, no flag on the play. It is fourth down, and the Irish will have to kick it away. Stay tuned for the Wade's RV Halftime Report. We'll showcase this week's McIntyre Law Scholar athletes and have a conversation with our participating school administrators, plus Thursday night lights and Friday night rivals highlights from across the country. All that including first half highlights and more of this game coming up on the Wade's RV Halftime Report. Here is the fourth down punt by Kilgallen. High snap, and he gets it away. End over end kick, and that will take... A bounce, and finally downed around the 35-yard line. Let's take a break. The Irish trail the Titans 14-12 to in a good game here on Friday Night Rivals. Back to the OCCC Friday Night Rivals game of the week from Bishop McGinnis High School, 14 to 12. The Titans out in front so far in the first matchup of this season. I say first matchup because how many seasons in a row, Myron, have they played at least two games? The maximum, of course, in the state championship. Last couple of years. Well, they know each other very well. You know, there's not a lot of secrets between the two. It's just can you stop what the other does. Carl Albert looking for their 17th state title in program history as the handoff goes to Xavier Robinson in for Bazell. The sophomore running back gets nothing. And a second down and 10. With a state championship this year, obviously would be six in a row, but they would also tie jinx for the longest or the most state championships by a single program. Yeah. Well, and that, of course, goes back to Gary Rose. He always had a five-year run of state championships. Goes back to uh, the first one in the uh, 90s. I mean, it's a, a, a lot of winnings gone on at uh, Carl Albert, no doubt. You can talk about their athletic director, Andy Collier, who won a state championship with the Midwest City Bombers in 95. So championships <laughs> run all around in this program. And in Midwest City, for that for that matter. Well, the last one at uh, 6A, the largest class is one on this side of the state. By Andy Collier, yeah. 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 Injured Titan coming up slow off that offensive line, T.J. Lambert, after the two-yard run. So it's now third down and eight for the Titans. Lambert, a senior for the Titans. Have a young offensive line, two sophomores and a junior. Easton Collier, Trey Holland, both sophomores. Their junior center, Gary Ray. Here's the third down and eight play for DeQuazy. Short little screen pass set up, and this is to Bazell, and he's going to be short of the first down. 
by a couple of yards, and this will be an interesting call here, Myron. You're about a yard and a half short, and it's going to be four down. Let's see what they do. Looks like a pretty good yard and a half. That's thought it's closer to two, looks like, so they're going to punt this, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to give them too short of a field. You only got well, less than two minutes to go. You're leading by two. So just so you know, Bazell and Xavier Robinson, and Xavier Thomas are the three upbacks blocking for Trey Washington. And now a timeout has been called by the Titans. They want to think about it. I tell you, and Xavier Robinson, sophomore, he is a guy that they think has had a, a pretty a bright future in front of him. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to Mike Dunn before the season started, and he, and he pointed him out. In, in fact, they had planned to run a lot of two-back stuff with both he and Buddy Bazell, both in the backfield together. Bazell had a great opening quarter, so they stuck with him for a while, and now both of them are in there. Mm -hmm. So they want to think about this. And, and Robinson had 166 yards two weeks ago against Guyman and scored three touchdowns. So obviously they have, like you said, two running backs that can do anything on the ground. Yeah, he's a big guy. But they say he's got a lot of speed. He's, he's, uh, he's not just a big plotter. He's a guy that's got big play uh, potential him just like Bazell does. So he's, uh, he's now, but he's also the future for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, of course, if you're McGinnis, you know, this game should be tied. But you can't kick an extra point, yeah. which tells me you can't kick a field goal. Uh, it'd be interesting if they score again, do they just start just going for two? Two, yeah. And I think at some point, well, probably be third quarter, well, unless they get the ball back here, they are going to kick it away, so they will get it. So they will have about a minute, what, after the kick, they'll probably have at least a minute and a half, maybe a little less to play with, and the way – River Warren has passed the football, Myron. They have a chance to get on the scoreboard before the end of the half. Yeah. Fourth down and one. Trey Washington is the punter. Again, you have the three big running backs as blockers, and they're going to kick it away. Good kick by the punter, and right there is Tarman, who made a dangerous catch on the ground, almost like a little short hop to a shortstop, but he's able to haul it in. And so the Irish take over with a minute and a half left to play. He would say daring. He <laughs> knew he had it all the way. But yeah, that uh, Let's was... watch it again. This is a good shortstop play, no doubt. He's got – I wonder if he's a baseball player as well. Watch this little short. Yeah, that's, uh, that's got a chance to maybe turn into something real bad. But he handled it well. Got a face mask. So that's going to tack on about 15. So a penalty at the end of the play, a face mask against Carl Albert. Must have been at the at the end of the tackle. I guess. I didn't really see it on the tackle, there, but I guess he did. So the face mask takes the football up to the 42-yard line. Good field position for the Irish with a minute and a half left to play in the game. Taffy behind Warren. Warren, play action, rolls out to his right, and he just throws it into the ground, no one even near the quarterback. And Carl Albert wants grounding called against River Warren. And they're going to talk about it. There was no one in the area. I, I, and it was a couple of Carl Albert guys. It, so yeah. <laughs> and it was very close whether he was outside the pocket. And they're going to say. I guess he's outside the tackle box. But did it make back the line of scrimmage? Is that a high school rule or college rule? Well, it didn't go to the line of scrimmage. Well, nonetheless, they are going to call it incomplete, second down and 10. Here's the handoff to Taffy. He's got some room right back up the middle, gets eight yards. They have timeouts to use, and they use one after the well, they're going to give him about seven yards. It'll bring up third down and three for Bishop McGinnis. Now, again, they're looking for the touchdown because of the kicking situation. What you wonder, does that get into, uh, into Carl Albert's uh, mindset in terms of they, they've got to get to the end zone? I mean, you want to get to the end zone. Everybody wants to get to the end zone. But also, you say, well, if we can kick a field goal, we're leading. Well, that's, 
that seems unlikely based on how they've uh, failed at the, uh, at the extra points. Mike Taffy with 112 total yards so far on the ground for Bishop McGinnis. What a night. Yeah, he's uh, – and he's just halfway through. Yeah. At just shy of 1,000 yards, so he's up over 1,000 yards for the season. So he's up – Almost, what is that, 1,050, 1,049 yards now for Mike Taffy this season. And this is week six, so. And they, have a, and they have a good schedule going forward, Meyer, and they play Western Heights, who has not won a game. Uh, so they play them next week. Then they go to Piedmont. Then a big game against Guthrie, uh, which could possibly decide the winner of this game. That, that could decide who finishes one, two, or three in this district. Yeah. And that'll be a tough game. Guthrie's uh, really good. They lost last week, but it's Guthrie's back to being Guthrie, what they were, say, four or five years ago. And Guthrie gets the Irish at home again. So they got Carl Albert at home, and they'll get McGinnis at home, which always helps. Here's the third down and three play. Warren hands off to Taffy. Running left, has some room, gets to the outside, and runs out of bounds around the 40-yard line for a first down. That is an Air National Guard first down. And the clock stops with 111 to play from the Titan 40-yard line. Yep, just gets out of bounds. I mean, stretch that play out, turns the corner. Don't have to use a timeout. Stops the clock, and they, the playbook's open, man. They could throw it. They could throw it across the middle. Tarman is to the bottom of your screen. He already has a 43-yard reception. Now they bring everyone to the left almost. And Warren looking left. Now he's looking right. No one's open. Now he throws it down the field, and he's got his receiver in and out of the hands of Andrew Smith. He had him wide open on the far sideline. A good pass. He put it on the outside of his shoulder, and he could not connect. It's now second down. Yeah, it looked like he should have had that. Let's look on the replay again. He's, he's looking for a receiver. He's not just running a run, and it's right there. And it's on his hands. He just Should have caught it, yeah. Just bring it in. Yep. Third down and 10, 103 left to play. Here's the snap. Quick pass by Warren. It is caught near the 30-yard line. This is Tarman. Makes a nice move and gets down to the 25-yard line. He gets a first down, an Air National, or make that an Air National Guard first down. And he moves the chain. The clock stops with 54 seconds to play, and Brian Pierce will take a timeout for the Fighting Irish. Yeah, I thought he might go out of bounds there. So he's got a few more yards, but now they're forced to use that their last timeout. But they're in prime scoring position. Again, the play, I mean, you still got 54 seconds on the clock, so you got plenty of time. To play. Again, the playbook's open, man. Well, did he take a timeout or not? Because now they're resetting the play clock and they're going. So I'm not sure a timeout was taken. Well, there's a lot of dead dead air there then. So yep. they, got, they got a break. They didn't. Take they did a get a break. Out. Now they start the clock, 50 seconds to go. Here's the snap to Warren. Looking left. Now he's being chased out of the pocket and breaks one tackle. Now he throws it to the end zone. Wide open is his receiver, Rice, and he catches the ball on the one-yard line. Oh, my gosh. He was so wide open, it's like you just don't just kind of get it to him. Now they've used a timeout, I guess. Oh, my gosh. Watch the play, though, by River Warren. Hey. His undershirt almost brought him down. And a shoestring catch for Noah Rice. Nice nice catch by Noah. And they're on the brink of uh, taking this lead uh, going into halftime. There you see the junior for Bishop McGinnis. Well, Warren's done a good job scrambling again. It's, for a sophomore, a lot of times you get in trouble, you just start running, trying to get away. Well, he's running to find a receiver. He's done that several times here in the first half where he's found a receiver, and then he's good enough to get the ball to them. Sometimes thrown against his body, sometimes long, sometimes short. Again, another one of those good-looking sophomore quarterbacks in the state. He looks like he's been through a war already. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the war paint on. 
only a sophomore, River Warren. Came in with a couple of touchdowns through the air, but nine interceptions, and that was what they were trying to prevent was in INTs. Mm-hmm. He's done one heck of a job taking care of the football tonight. Yeah, I, don't even, I don't even remember him coming close to a pick tonight no. in the first half. Mm-hmm. Very smart with the football. Coach might make him tuck in that undershirt, though, after that play, right? Yeah, that almost brought him down. First down and goal. Here's the handoff to Taffy. And he ducks his head into the end zone, and it is a touchdown for Bishop McGinnis, and they take the lead on a Homeland Grocery touchdown. Homeland Grocery, your homegrown advantage, and Mike Taffy was with his third touchdown run of the night. And Bishop McGinnis will take a timeout to talk about what they're going to do with this, and here it is again. Made it look easy. Yep, made it look easy, and... I was going to give the guys up front a lot of credit. And Great camera work. You saw he was in the end zone before his knee hit the ground. Ball crossed the plane. Taffy now, what, with about 115 yards on the ground almost? Yep. So three touchdowns, and his name's rising to the top of your player of the game status. Well, it's a, it's a crowded field right now. <laughs> is, Carl yeah. Albert's got a couple guys that have done some things. Although I tell you that the last couple possessions, they've slowed up the offense for yeah. Carl Albert. I don't think they figured some things out. At halftime, we'll talk to the coach with the lead. And right now, that is Brian Pierce of Bishop McGinnis. They have come from behind to take an 18 to 14 lead. They've called timeout to talk about what they want to do. And I'm not even sure. A, Let's kick a field goal was in that phrase, Myron. No, I don't think so. They've They're going to go for it. Taffy is the deep back behind River Warren. Two wide outs to the near side, one to the far side. Warren will pass it to Tarman, and there he is. T- uh, touchdown. The two-point is good. And so they get a couple of those back. It is now 20-14. to 14. What a drive right before the half. They took less than a minute to do it. And now they've taken the lead into the halftime. Pretty impressive. Although I say that, Carl Albert does have 28 seconds to go. Well, and they've uh, shown they can make some plays. But, you know, just a little pass out to Tarman. He's shown he's pretty good with the ball in his hands. Yards after the catch. Only need a couple there. And sets up for a heck of a second half. Got a good block by Noah Rice, who was out there blocking for him. And blocked a couple of defenders. Allowed him to walk into the end zone. Good look there at those two who have had great games. Andrew Smith, number 12. And there is Mike Taffy behind the behind the uh, iPad. Will Kilgallen will kick it off for Bishop McGinnis. And he has a strong leg with a strong wind behind him. And let's see if he puts it out of the end zone like... He did on the last kick. Well, we've got an entire second half to go. And, of course, last week, Carl Albert scored a couple touchdowns in the final five minutes, 12 seconds of the game. So, <laughs> so uh, if you're a Titan fan, I think uh, you're not I, worried about this. I think you'll you'll be heard from in the second half. This is going to go right down to the wire. Xavier Thomas back deep for Carl Albert. And his kick is lined. And... Kicked out of bounds. So, Carl Albert will have decent field position to start with, with 28 seconds to go before halftime. Yeah, no time run off the clock. And I mentioned that those two touchdowns, the final 5 12 against Guthrie, one of the plays was a hook and lateral. Hmm. And I was teasing uh, Coach Dunn. I said, man, that was run back before you even born, 1977. <laughs> Oklahoma, Nebraska, and it worked perfectly. Yeah. Good look at Brian Pierce in his fourth year as head coach of Bishop McGinnis. Trying to win his 35th game as a head coach. So here is the first down and 10 play from the 35. They will hand it off to Robinson. And I believe they elected just to run the clock out and go to halftime trailing by six. If you got something big there, you might try something. But they probably won't run another play here. A loss of a yard for Xavier Robinson. 
Second down and 11, and that will do it as we are down to the final five seconds. Exciting first half as Bishop McGinnis fell behind 14-6 and have rallied to take a 20-14 halftime lead into the locker room here at halftime, Myron. Well, it's living up to the billing. Both uh, two good teams playing some pretty good football. Let's go downstairs to Ed Murray, who is with the head coach, Brian Pierce. Ed. Yeah, Coach Pierce just came over and went, woo-wee, what a half. No, yeah, kind of, kind of back and forth there, and uh, it's pretty exciting half so far. You uh, get two big plays hit you. A lot of teams like, oh, my goodness, and you respond and have the halftime lead despite those two big plays. Well, you know, once again, it's the character of this team. You know, they've, they've stayed in and fought, you know, time and time again, and, and once again just keeping their head down and just executing. That's, uh, that's what they did. I'm proud of them. Been impressed with the quarterback keeping plays alive. No, absolutely. You know, he's a young quarterback, and he's coming into his own. And once again tonight, I think he, he showed, you know, starting to grow up a little bit. Game far from over. What are you telling your team at half? Well, you know, it's like before. Just uh, it's four quarters, and, uh, you know, we've been in this situation before and where we've been up at halftime with these guys, and you just got to keep on the accelerator for another half. All right, good luck, Coach. That's Coach Pierce. Says his team is up 20-14 to 14 here at halftime and a great rivalry, Carl Albert and Bishop McGinnis. Jack? All right, thank you very much, Ed. And there you see a touchdown pass to Mike Taffy as the Irish lead here at halftime, 20 to 14. We will take a break and we will come back with the Wade's RV halftime report. You're watching the OCCC Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week, a great one here in Oklahoma City. All right, what are we doing? What are we doing? And Carl Albert will get the football to start the second half. They deferred. The toss. They won the toss. And Good stuff, Brian. And, and then I will toss down to Ed for the interviews, correct? Okay. You're watching Friday Night Rivals. Now, time for the Wade's RV Halftime Report. Welcome back, everyone, to the OCCC Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week on the Wade's RV Halftime Report. Let's take a look at our scholar athletes for this week. Thank you for watching Friday Night Rivals. I'm Noble McIntyre of McIntyre Law. If you're wondering why I'm wearing my Burns Flat Eagles High School jersey, it's because I'm here to introduce this week's Scholar Athletes. Isabella Sherm of Bish McGinnis High School is our Scholar Athlete of the Week. She's a dual athlete who uses her skills as part of a three-time 5A state champion in performance cheer, North being a champion in track and field as a high jumper. She says being a part of the 41-member cheer squad gives her that team concept. While high jumping gives her that boost, 
that an individual sport brings. After cheer, like I start track after nationals, and uh, like I don't have to like catch up from all the lifting I miss because I'm already like in shape from cheer, which is really nice. Track really helps cheer because like it makes my legs a lot stronger for like tumbling and jumps and stunning. She spends time at the Infant Crisis Summer Team Program and has put together 90 hours of community service and still manages a 3.8 GPA. Her involvement in sports, a big part of that too. It's really busy like around regionals and state. We had showings on Wednesdays, practice Tuesday, Thursday, games Friday. So it was kind of difficult to balance stuff, but doing those all four years, I've gotten a lot of time management skills. My older brother played baseball here, my older sister played softball here, my older cousin played softball here, and my other cousin played baseball here too, and football, and my brother played football. With an athletic family like that, it's no surprise that Nina Lavalle is our Scholar Athlete of the Week. Even though she started out as a softball player for 10 years, she digs volleyball. So I love that it's a team sport, and I just love the sport. It's for me. I love playing good teams, good hitters, when they can slam the ball at me, even if I don't get it up or if it hits me in the face, it's my favorite part. An all-conference tournament performer who made the all-tournament teams in the Carl Albert and Kuita tournaments, Nina is quite the athlete. But there's a line she draws when it comes to athletics and academics, which explains why she's a 4.0 student who's never made a B. I mean, it's hard, but everything's hard. If you just put in the work, it's easy. And I mean, I've always pushed myself to be good at academics, and I always put academics first over volleyball. Volleyball's taught me a lot. It's taught me a lot about hard work and discipline and sticking to it, and you can do anything. Congratulations to you both, and remember, all Scholar athletes have a chance to win a $5,000 scholarship. It's all brought to you by Friday Night Rivals on CW34. Great, piece, great pieces there by uh, on our Scholar athletes by Myron. Bishop McGinnis leads it 20-14 to 14 here at halftime over Carl Albert. Let's go downstairs to Ed Murray with some special guests. Ed? Well, I'm with Andy Collier, the district athletic director for Carl Albert and really the Middell system. And Andy, as you mentioned, Jack, you called his game, and we actually interviewed him right after the game, the last quarterback, 6A, state champion on the west side at Midwest City. But right now as athletic director, Nina Lavalle, we just saw her as our scholar athlete of the week. What about her? She's awesome. Comes from a great family. Um, kind of it, it's perfect she great scholar great athlete that's kind of what we strive for in mid -Dale. Well, speaking of scholars, right behind us, these are the Class 5A state champion scholar cheer squad of Carl Albert City. Isn't that great? So thank you ladies and congratulations. Well done on the field and in the classroom. And speaking of now, you're the athletic director for the entire district, and tonight Midwest City's playing Dell City. I did. I, you know, we got Midwest City playing Dell City, and, of course, uh, another big game here. Um, I am in charge of all three sites. I called this game tonight. I got this double duty because I got a kid playing for Carl Albert, so I lucked out and got to, got to come to this game. All right, give us his number and his name. Number 50, Easton Collier. He's a sophomore, and um, he's doing good. Pretty proud of him. All right, we're very proud of what you've accomplished at the Mid-Dell School System. And maybe one of those Dell City, Midwest City can bring it back to 6A. It'd be nice. It'd, I think we're going to see these two teams again. I do, too. It's a great first half, but like you said, we've, we've seen each other in the state championship many years, so I expect this to go down the wire. All right, thank you, Andy. It's good to see you again. Been a lot of years. Jack, back to you. All right, thank you very much, uh, Ed. Andy Collier's Midwest City Bombers taking it on the chin tonight to uh, the Dell City Eagles at halftime. We're at halftime here. McGinnis over Carl Albert, 20-14. to 14. We're back with more of the Wade's RV Halftime Report right after this. a good job down there. I smell food. What the heck is <laughs> food? Yeah, I'm smelling. Uh, they must have bought some food somewhere. Frito pie, chili pie, or something. I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. Okay, so Ed doesn't have another interview. I thought he had another interview. Ed, do you have another interview? Yes, okay, okay. Okay, that's okay, that's okay. And then we take a break and then come back and do the uh, replays again. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
Is this the Bishop McGinnis band, I, I no, would think? No, this must be Carl Albert. They're the wrong colors. I don't see any green. Or I guess I it could. You're watching Friday Night Rivals. Now, time for the Wade's RV Halftime Report. Welcome back to Bishop McGinnis High School. 20-14, to 14, our halftime score, the Irish over the Carl Albert Titans. Let's go back downstairs to Ed Murray with another special guest. Ed. Well, thank you very much, Jack. Joining me is the principal and president here at Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School, David Morton. Check earlier. We got the Palm Squad here about to go out there. Your scholar athlete this week, Isabella Sherm, one of the cheerleaders. Wow, what a, what a great young lady. Uh, you know, besides all the great things she does in the athletic arena for her, she's a scholar athlete. Uh, she does tremendous service in our community, so I can't say enough great things about her. Besides her, what, five state championships, two national championships, yeah, and, yeah. oh, by the way, Class 5A state high jump champion. So not a bad high school career. And one member of the Class 5A state champion cheer squad. Carl Albert, the, the uh, scholar cheer squad yeah, in the state them? champions. Know, and now great. you've got them. Yeah. This, you know, this has been a great rivalry with us and Carl Albert. We've played in, what, I think six uh, state championship games. We've been in the same district for several years. We have, a, you know, just a great rapport with their administration. And, and uh, you know, we'd like to win a few more games. They've kind of dominated us. But... We're, 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 we're really proud to be able to compete at that level. Bishop McGinnis, a very special place. I know you're heavily involved with the community. How's the school year been going for you? You know, we kind of starting to get COVID in the rearview mirror, and it's really, really this last week, it really started feeling normal again. And, you know, you can see the smile back on the kids' faces, and uh, just, just their engagement back in the school again is just something we've been missing for the last year and a half. And we want to thank you for hosting us tonight because oh we could not have a Friday night rivals schedule without having this great matchup between Bishop oh, and Guinness. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we hope you guys will do it again next year. We'll be back if you invite us. Awesome. Thank All you very right. much. Except we'll be over at the other place. You'll have That's, a little that'll be great. That'll All be right. fun. Jack, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Ed. Halftime here at Bishop McGinnis, 20 to 14, our score. We're back with more of the Wade's RV halftime report right after this. Total yards by both teams. Does Bishop McGinnis not have a band? I'm sure they do, but I don't know why we wouldn't hear them. But I don't. You know, they're not down there playing. Uh -uh. What was that? I don't know. You hear that buzz? Yeah. What's all of a sudden? I have a buzz in my ear. Okay. We both do. We. Uh, there, 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 no, there, there you go. Is the color mic? I don't know. 
Uh, yep, Diet Coke. You're gonna have to wear the spare, Myron. No, I'm good. I got some water. Thanks. Myron, you're gonna have to wear. They're saying you're gonna have to wear the spare. You're watching Friday Night Rivals. Now, time for the Wade's RV Halftime Report. Back at Bishop School here at halftime, 20 to 14, the Irish out in front of the Titans. Each week during halftime of our Friday Night Rivals broadcast, we'll be showcasing outstanding Thursday Night Lights and Friday Night Rivals game highlights from across the country. Here are some of the best from last week's games. Second and five after the five-yard pass play. Another fake. It's Destin Wade, but he pitches to Keaton. The twin telepathy goes through, and Keaton Wade scores. It's a touchdown and extra point away from losing this game, so. Arsenal gets the kick out of it. Pretty good one. Oh, that's off a foot. And how many times? Watch out. He's it's gone. Ignore. It's a touchdown. Look his direction, and now Whitfield extending the play, throws, and that he is intercepted, and what a grab. Unbelievable extension on that play. Not a great sign, but they're going to try to run around. Williams with the inside pitch this time. That's actually a pass, and he did not go down. He got a hand on the ground. This may be this may be a problem. This may be a problem. He's got one man behind him. He's going to veer off a little bit, but Antonio Williams is going to walk away and strike up the band for the Dutch Fort Silver Fox. I would hail Marion at this point. Whitlock is going to keep it. Whitlock has a seed. Devin Whitlock all the way from the touchdown. Right, and curve it in. There it goes on the way. Oh, close. He made it. He made it. Are you kidding me? Helm, he scored on a touchdown earlier, and he does it again. And Mountridge wins the game in overtime. Some exciting uh, uh, halftime, uh, half, some some exciting uh, replays from around the country. Let's take a look at some of our halftime stats. Meyer total yards. Bishop McGinnis, 265 for 150 for Carl Albert, uh, passing 157 for Bishop McGinnis, 108 on the ground, 14 first downs for the Irish to four. For Carl Albert, and we only have a six-point ball game. Yeah, uh, McGinnis has possessed the ball. Uh, Carl Albert's got some big plays to get their points on the board, but it's, it's McGinnis that's had the long drives, and they've added some big plays in there with Luke Thomas, you know, yak yards after the catch, things of that nature. But they possess the football, and the last two times Carl Albert had it, actually the last three times, they haven't done a whole lot with it. So we'll see if that continues in the second half. But they're only down six points, that is Carl Albert, so very much still in this game. But if you're McGinnis, you like what you've done so far. Yeah, it's been a great game so far. Let's take a break on the Wade's RV Halftime Report. 20-14, to 14. we're back after this. Yeah, and then they might do that three-minute uh, runaround warm-up period, so don't forget we might have four minutes. Okay, yeah. That's fine. We can, we can do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not much of a singer either. Ardmore. Ardmore's 5-0. and mm. Ranked number five. So Carl Albert's ranked number six and Bishop McGinnis is number seven. I don't know who does these rankings, but who's number one in 5A? I think on the east side the of the McAllister is number two. Collinsville's really good. 
on it there. Um, Collinsville's number one, yeah. According to these score, score rankings. Yeah, I mean, there's several, you know, the Oklahoma does rankings, <clears throat> AP yeah. does them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Welcome back to Oklahoma City's Bishop McGinnis High School. As you get a good look at fans making their way to the concession stand, and get a hot that, dog and some I was going to say, I'll take some nachos with some peppers if you yeah. want to bring them up to the uh, press box. Not sure when I'll get to eat them, but uh, good game so far. Myron twenty to fourteen. As we wait on the teams to come out of the locker room for the second half. This just one of the big games, of course, uh, in Oklahoma City. Bixby and Choc uh, Choctaw going after it, and so far in that 6A battle earlier, uh, earlier, uh, Bixby was all over the Yellow Jackets. Well, Bixby has shown they're the big bullies on the block. It was used to be all about Tulsa Union Jinx, and they try and trade off. But uh, the last couple of years, and, you know, I had people saying last year they're the best team in the state, regardless of class. Of course, they beat Jinx earlier this season. Yeah. And uh, this is a rematch of last year's 6A uh, state title game, and it's all Bixby. All Bixby. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about these two schools, but other schools in 5A, you have Collinsville, who's over Claremore right now. Collinsville is a good program. Let's, uh, I do believe Ed Murray is with the head coach for Carl Albert, so let's go down and talk to Mike Dunn. Ed, take it away. Thank you, Jack. Coach, that's kind of what we expect in the first half, back and forth with some big plays in a tight ball game. Yeah, yeah, well, Bishop McGinnis, uh, Carl Albert, you know, it's, it's round 12 in the last five years, so... Uh, Two ball clubs that know each other real well that are playing really hard. Pretty good half. What'd you tell your team at halftime for a second half? Just got to keep playing physical. Got to get off the field. You know, defensively, I think they've ran 50 plays to our 14. You know, and that that's something you got to flip in the second half. We got to get off the field on third downs. Got to get stops, and and offensively, we got to maintain drives. Well, your team has flipped it in the second half this year. That's true. Yeah, yeah. We 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 proved that we'll go play in the second half, and uh, you know, hopefully, go out and, and fight in the second half here. All right. Good luck, coach. Appreciate coach Mike Dunn. All righty. First year head coach, four-time state champion as a player at Carl Albert High School. Jack? Championship rings run deep in that family and a lot of families in Midwest City. Yeah, and he knows this is his first year here but as the head coach. But, yeah, he was on some state championships. In fact, he was a part of the, the first five uh, state yep. championship runs. So he knows what uh, Carl Albert is all about. Uh, he's right, though. They've got to find a way to get off the football field because in this first half, McGinnis – the 43-yard catch and run by uh, by uh, Tarman, that was third and 11. Yeah. And uh, they've had a couple drives like that where they picked up, uh, you know, big third down conversions to keep drives alive. If they stop them there, they get the ball back. So that if you're if you're called out, you got to find a way to stop McGinnis on third and long. But give McGinnis credit for being able to uh, convert those. They've they've done a really good job. And you know, it's interesting what he said. 50 plays offensively for Bishop McGinnis, only 14 for Carl Albert, and they only trail by six points. Yeah, yeah, so they, they've got to be able to feel fortunate for that. They've, you know, Brazil had the big run. They've had big plays to, to get their touchdowns. Yeah. Um, but they are a team themselves where they can possess the ball. They can do things in the running and the passing game, but you got to have the football to do that. So we'll see, we'll see again the who makes the best adjustments uh, here in the second half. And of course, uh, if you're McGinnis – you know you've been here before. You've had a halftime lead, and that team in the White's found a way to win the game. I believe they had a halftime lead uh, in the state championship game last year and lost it, right? 33 to – Yeah. What was the final score? 33-20, something like that? Yeah, and, well, you know, and like usually I'm in the studio uh, doing highlights, and I know when they played in the regular season, I had all these uh, McGinnis highlights. <laughs> by the time we went on the air, it was Carl Albert lead the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, Some late edits, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, they won the first half, but it is just a half. So I, I expect to be a fourth quarter tight finish. We'll see if somebody makes the key mistake. and That's something McGinnis has done here early in the season. They've had turnovers. Well, there's, there's been no turnovers, no interceptions, and really not even come close to one, and that's to their credit. Coming up in the fourth quarter, we will select the OCCC play of the game. OCCC College's great crushing debt is not, and we have several big plays. Don't forget the 73-yard touchdown pass to uh, Trey Washington for Carl Albert. Bazell with a big uh, run 
also uh, for a touchdown for Carl Albert. Then you have the big plays as we talked about for uh, Bishop McGinnis. You know, you talk about we, we talk about all the championships for Carl Albert, but McGinnis winning in 06 and 07 could be the 06 team. You go back, could be one of the best defensive teams in the state. They only gave up 76 points all, all year long, and, and when you do that in high school, <laughs> you're pretty good defensively. Oh, yeah, and they, and they've – you know, we talk about the, the players that have played here in the past. And you, you could go either school if you talk to McGinnis, you know. Uh, like I said, I'm sure Dominic Richardson's here. I talked about him earlier, but Brennan Walker's a linebacker at Oklahoma. He's probably in Dallas. So, I mean, he's, he is probably not here. Gabe Iker was a big yep. lineman that yep. played here. Of course, played at Oklahoma, played in the NFL. They've had a number of guys uh, that were really, really good football players at both these, uh, both these programs. Interesting doing uh, my homework for this game. Sports Illustrated, number 11 of the high school program's top 25, Bishop McGinnis, back in 07 and 08. So they have been nationally recognized, as has Carl Albert, of course, and Jinx and all these schools that have won numerous state titles. But uh, a lot of history. We're looking at a lot of history in these two programs. Yeah. Fun to watch. Yeah, they're fun. And that's – and when you – and, you know, when you're like a freshman and you're seeing Buddy Bazell doing what he's doing or now Michael Taffy doing what he's doing at McGinnis – you want to be those guys. You want to keep you when you get your chance to play varsity or whatever. You want to make sure you keep the ball rolling. You don't want to be the school that the streak stops. Yeah, exactly. And so that kind of feeds on itself. The Titans will receive to start the second half as Will Kilgallen will tee it up for Bishop McGinnis. Carl Albert won the toss and elected to defer, so they will have the wind here in the third quarter. Again, jumped out to a 14-6 lead. And the Irish responded with a couple of touchdowns. Here's the Ortho Central kickoff. Ortho Central, it's in our bones to take care of yours. And it is a short kick. And down by the Titans at the 33. So they will start first down and 10. They're going to spot it at the 34. In the first half. Buddy Bazell, four rushes, 60 yards, and a touchdown. Titans, only 150 total yards. You know, often what everything kind of starts up front. Which offensive line or defensive line can control the line of scrimmage? Uh, and like I said, they were kind of quiet the first half, the exceptions of some big plays. Let's see who starts to win the battle up front. Bazell in the backfield next to Reed DeQuazy. And DeQuazy, this might have been a broken play, and DeQuazy will take it himself, and he gets a couple of yards. He looked like he wanted to hand off to Bazell, but they were both heading in the same direction, and so DeQuazy just took it, tucked it under and ran with it. Actually, yeah. it looked like Bazell may have gone the wrong way. I almost called it a counter, but Bazell didn't counter. No. <laughs> it's, oh, I guess I'm supposed to go there. <laughs> So second down and seven. They're going to give him three yards up to the 42. So he got good yardage on first down. There is Reed DeQuazy, a junior quarterback. Coming in with eight touchdowns through the air so far through the season, coming into tonight's game. Takes a snap. His pass is caught for a first down across the 45. And it is caught by Demarion Brown, his first catch of the night. It is an Oklahoma four dealers first down. So he put that in some traffic, but put it where it had to be. Nice catch, nice conversion to keep the drive going. And this is a big drive because, like I said, Carl Albert's offense last couple drives didn't do much, you know. Uh, and so for them, they want to establish something here the running game. Yeah, they'll throw it. Reed, uh, DeQuaze will run it. They want to get some things going here with this drive. Three wideouts to the near side. Here's a bad snap, and DeQuaze falls on it back at the – 38-yard line, and just like that, now it's second down and 16 for Carl Albert after that bad snap. Yeah, and that's just an unforced, uh, it's not a turnover, but an error that puts behind the chains. And so now you're looking, you know, second and long and probably a passing situation. Of course, you don't have to get it all in on this one drive. You'd like to get something to make third and manageable coming up, you know, third and five, third and six or something. Third quarter, just underway, 10 minutes to go, 20-14. to 14, The Irish with the lead. DeQuazy moves Bazell to his left. 
Takes a snap, drops back, looking down the field. Now is going to run with it, looking for some room, and will be run out of bounds around the 45. So he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. And so it's third down and 10 for Carl Albert. Yeah, I think he may have been, was going to look for Brazil going across the middle there, but uh, kind of got rushed out of the pocket, got what he could get. And uh, they actually, I guess, got him out about the 44, so it's going to be third and 11. Three wide outs to the right side for the Titans. Here is DeQuazy, his pass picked up off the ground, gets a first down. This is Xavier Thomas, and Xavier Thomas gets a huge play for a first down for Carl Albert down to the 37-yard line of Bishop McGinnis. Two big third-down conversions, and this is not the best pass. It's low, which you figure that's going to allow the defense to get over there and take control. Good hands to keep that from hitting the ground, but he just turns on the Jets right there and gets the first down a little bit more. Oklahoma four dealers first down and good presence to keep his knee off the ground as well for yeah. Thomas. Mm-hmm. First down and 10 from the 37. DeQuazy follows Bazell. He has a hole, gets a first down down to the 20 yard line. Good job of the quarterback to follow his running back through that hole, and he picks up another Oklahoma four dealers first down. He's a patient runner, man. He's, he sees an opening, then he kind of hits the accelerator, but he just kind of buys his time and doesn't look like he's moving. Then he finds a hole and he hits it, and uh, they've got a nice drive here to open up this third quarter as they try to take the lead back. They spot it at the 21, first down and 10 for the Titans. Low snap. Here's the handoff to Bazell. And there's a flag. And I believe the Titans are going to get called for a hold. And they had a wide receiver out on the far end. And that's how Bazell got a couple of yards. So this will come back. Yeah, it looks like on that end there, at least uh, the McGinnis guy was, he did a good job letting them know he was being held. <laughs> Even though Carl Albert does not agree. You hear how strong the wind is. It's actually picking up as we go along tonight. It is supposed to be quite windy over the weekend, and it has started tonight. So you have a game late in the fourth quarter, and you know a team that can't kick a field goal, which is McGinnis. We don't know about Carl Albert. They've kicked a couple point after so far tonight. And let's watch the hold again. And there he is grabbing the shoulder of the jersey. Good catch by our guys running the cameras. Great work. First down and 21 for Carl Albert. Here is the pitch to Thomas running right behind Bazell, and he's going nowhere. Good pursuit defensively that time by Noah Rice, a Bishop McGinnis right there. Yeah, couldn't find a crease to get the to get through that initial wave, and you know McGinnis has overcome a couple first and 20s we'll see if Carl Albert can but he's stringing this out they're trying to find he's looking for a hole an opening but it just wasn't there good defense by, by McGinnis gain of one second down and 20 from the 31 passing situation for the Titans bad snap again here's the counter to Bazell he breaks one tackle cuts it up the right side and gets down across the 15 to the 14 yard line So they get the majority of that back. It's going to be third down and short now for Carl Albert after the nice run by Buddy Bazell. When in doubt, go Bazell. (laughs) I mean, you know, it's it's Give it to your best player. Well, yeah, Yeah. and he accelerates through the hole, and now you've got a manageable third down. And I don't know. I think if they come, as long as they don't lose yards, I bet they go for it on fourth down. Good shoestring tackle by Braylon Ketchum to prevent a possible touchdown. Third down from the Wildcat. Here is Bazell back up the middle, and he gets a first down still on his feet. Down across the 10-yard line to the 7-yard line. It is a Oklahoma Ford dealer's first down. And teams like that Wildcat, especially with a powerful runner like Bazell, because you basically got an extra blocker. You know, yeah. you don't, uh, you know, not a quarterback handing it off to the running back, just put another blocker up there, and that's one more guy to give you, a, give you some space to run. And, Bazell takes advantage of it. 
First down and goal for the Titans. Clock runs, six and a half to play, third quarter. They tie it with a touchdown point after they take the lead. Here's another Wildcat to Bazell. Right back up the middle. Spins his way down to the one-yard line, but is tackled right there. Good tackle by Brennan Chumo. And a second down and goal from the one now for Carl Albert. And they're going to go quickly. Yeah, just stay with it. It's, it's working for you. From the Wildcat, Bazell with a snap. And he's Ooh. brought down from behind the line of scrimmage. Noah Rice right there. And possibly Vincent Chivers, the nose guard. Those two, Shivers and Rice right here. Look at that. Well, yeah, there's it, you get the guy coming off the edge. And then also some penetration up front. That's where you stop. And they say, we're going we're gonna to go for it. They're going to run the Wildcat again on third down and goal. You'd probably think four down territory. And here is Bazell, and he walks in yeah. for a Homeland Grocery touchdown. Homeland Grocery, your homegrown advantage. And the Titans on an opening third quarter drive, taking up half of the quarter. They come back and they tie it 20 to 20, pinning the point after. It's just big boy football. Again, you got the numbers, and you get your best running back behind an extra blocker. And he just powers his way in there. Fourth, third touchdown for, second touchdown for Bazell. For Bazell, yes. yes. Here's the point after, and it is up, and it is good. So the Titans on a good opening half take a 21-20 lead. We're back after this on the OCCC Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week. This is going, you'll be headed to Dallas in about. <laughs> yeah, I know. Good. Are you leave from here? Are you going home and then? Uh, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we didn't pack. Kathy had to work most of the afternoon, so she didn't get home until 4.15. Plus, my daughter's going to stay at the house, so i got to. We're back at Bishop McGinnis High School on the OCCC Friday Night Rivals. Jack Damerel, Myron Patton, Ed Murray, and what has turned out to be what we thought it would be, a great football game. 21-20, the Titans taking the lead on an opening third quarter drive thanks to Buddy Bazell. Nine rushes, 90 yards so far for the senior talented running back. A couple of touchdowns on the ground. You see why he has... Many Division One offers, Myron. What an athlete. Yeah. Uh, Preseason athlete. All-State selection. Well, that was a statement drive for Carl Albert, too. Just letting you know that uh, we're going to play physical up front. Well, you heard Mike Dunn talk about that. We're not going anywhere. That's what they did. We'll see how McGinnis answers. Ethan Spickwack with the kickoff for the Titans on the Ortho Central kickoff. Here is McGinnis with some room. There's Tarman back up the sideline to the right. Has one man to beat and he cannot. It is the kicker Spickwack bringing him down at midfield. What a return by Paul Tarman. Well, it was a good kickoff too. Got to the end zone. You said, well, is he going to return that? Well, he made the right decision. He was one guy away from taking that to the house. He took it at the one yard line and he said he went out of bounds at the 47, so a 46-yard return, and yeah, he stepped, stepped out, out right, right there. there yeah. First time all season, what, we finally got <laughs> the <laughs> foot on the sideline, right? Yeah. That white <laughs> thing, you can't step on that. That's, that's out of bounds. First down and 10 for Bishop McGinnis. Here is River Warren, the handoff to his running back. And Taffy gets actually going to lose a yard, second down 11. 
Well, the good is Taffy is, and you definitely want to stop him. You just can't forget about the receivers because they have shown, again, that they can they can find Tarman. They can find Smith. He's got some targets, and the quarterback's been poised tonight. Even when you get pressure on him to be able to get outside the pocket and find one of those guys. So they're, t- they're a tough offense to deal with. Big number 79, Santino Campbell in on the stop for the Titans. Here's the second down and 11 play, and now – a flag is thrown, and the penalties now transitioning over to uh, McGinnis. A couple penalties in the first half kind of halted some Carl Auer drives, and now McGinnis is going backwards to second down at 16 after the five-yard illegal procedure penalty. Well, you hate illegal procedures, but you really hate them from a receiver because it's not there's nobody in his face like the lineman, and uh, he just got a little nervous there, left early. Here's Warren looking to pass over the middle. Has his receiver open, and he dropped the football. That is Noah Rice, who had him wide open, and he could not come up with it. It is now third down and 16, and that's that's a killer if you're a quarterback because you put it right where the receiver is. Yep, Broncos, little crossing route right there, and he looks away right there. He's running before he's got it, and he knows it. He knows it because he was – Looking to who's there and where can I beat this guy and how many yards can I get after the catch? Got to catch it first. Camera work tells it all, right? You saw his eyes yeah. just kind of drift off. Really, no, no doubt about it. Five wideouts now in the game for the Irish. Here is Warren. Looking right, still looking right. Now looking over the middle, throws it over the middle. It is caught. Not enough for a first down. And Taffy finally brought down. He is the receiver making the catch. It's going to be well short of a first down, and they're going to have to kick it away. About five yards short of that. So, And there's Carl Albert answering. They said, we got to get off the field. And they score in the first drive. They get a three and out here on this drive after a really good return on the kickoff. So it's a nice start to the quarter for Carl Albert. Kilgallen to punt for Bishop McGinnis. High snap and nice high kick. And it takes a McGinnis bounce once again. And they will down it down around the inside the 15. Let's take a break. 21-20, the Titans out in front tonight on the OCCC Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week. Watching Oklahoma City Community College Friday Night Rivals live on CW34, presented by GMC. Welcome back, everyone, to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, on the CW34, our old Triple C Friday Night Rivals game of the week. A good one, 21 20. This game's going to go down to the, could be the final possession in the fourth quarter, Myron. Titans have the football, first down and 10 from their, from their 12. Bad snap, and DeQuazy able to pick it up and just get back to a couple of yards. Once again, a bad snap on the exchange, and so it's second down. He may have got, let's see how many yards he gets. He gets on that one, too, so it's second down and eight. Yeah, that messed up the whole timing of the play, and they had that on their last drive. They were able to overcome it, but that's one of those things. Uh, of course, I guess it's better than throwing it over his head, but still. That's an issue right now. 
Last drive here in the third quarter for the Titans. A heavy contention of Buddy Bazell. Robinson in the backfield with DeQuazy to his right, right there. Here is a quick pass out to Thomas. He gets a nice block and tackled out of bounds near the 24-yard line. It will be a first down for Carl Albert on Oklahoma. Four dealers first down. Yeah, just uh, get the ball to one of your playmakers. Nice block there. He picks up a real good, that's a good first down. He can't give him some room outside the, uh, their own goal line. Fast-moving third quarter. Clock stop, two and a half to play. 21-20, the Titans with the one-point lead. Robinson, once again in the backfield. Here is the snap to DeQuazy. He calls his own number and may have gotten a yard at the most. And is brought down by Chris Clark, one of the captains for this Bishop McGinnis squad, who is coming back. You see the cast on his hand. He had been out with a hand injury, a three-year starter for the Fighting Irish, and now he's playing with a broken wrist. That makes you always look tough when you're playing with a cast in your hand, football, you know. No doubt about, about broken it. Yes. bones. Second down and nine for Carl Albert. DeQuazy back to pass. Short pass, and he overthrows his receiver, Thomas. Might not have been much there anyway. Yeah, uh, there's there good hold. coverage by Bishop McGinnis, Noah Rice right there. And we called Noah Rice's name all night long defensively. Yeah, he's been around the ball a lot. Big third down here for McGinnis. See if they can uh, get off the field. Force a punt, get some good field position. Third down and nine. They need to get to the 35 for the first down. Here is DeQuazy. Steps up into the pocket, will run. Can he get outside? Yes, he gets the first down. Up to the 40, now to the 41. A great run by Reed DeQuazy, picking up a Carl Carl Albert Titan first down. Again, just a real patient runner, but he's faster than what you think. I think he kind of fools people how fast he is, but uh, gets around the corner here, then goes by that guy, picks up another couple yards. And Oklahoma four dealers first down from the 41 for Carl Albert. Bazell getting a break. Now he's back in behind DeQuazy on this play. Bad snap again. He picks it up, hands it off to Bazell, and he's out over the 45 to the 49. Actually, down to the 48, they say his knee went down, and so it's second down and short for the Titans. At the conclusion of tonight's game, we will select the GMC player of the game. A candidate right there, big number 45, who's going out after that play. Yeah, that's suddenly out of... Uh out of trouble and they're on the end of the field. Now they're looking to see if they can score. Under a minute to play in the third quarter. Robinson to DeQuazy's right. Low snap again. DeQuazy up over the middle. Pass is caught at the 30. Breaks free at the 25. Down to the 20. And that is the freshman. Actually, that is Demarion Brown, the senior. I thought Trey Washington was in the area, but that is Demarion Brown. And it is another Oklahoma four dealers first down for Carl Albert. Just found a soft spot there in that zone, and he broke up tackles after that. And big game. They don't throw it a lot, but they're pretty effective when they do throw it. There you see the senior to Marion Brown. First down and 10 from the 23. Bazell on the handoff. Over left tackle down to the 20-yard line. A gain of three. Second down and seven, actually two, and that'll be the final play in a quick third quarter here in Carl Albert, and that is not a good picture there as Bazell is not getting up after that run. So we have finished three quarters of play here, and actually you see the thumbs up, so possibly a cramp. Let's take a break. Back with the fourth quarter right after this on the OCCC Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week.
control Bazell. Buddy Bazell off after a cramp after the last run to end the third quarter. So good news for the Titans there, and they will get some fluids into Bazell. And we start the fourth quarter, 21-20 our score. The Titans with the football and the lead. They have the football, second down and eight when we resume play. They have it at the 21, but always a good sign when you know it's just a cramp, Myron. And yeah. Like we said from week one, where's the mustard <laughs> and the pickle juice? Whatever works, man. Uh, it does show you can still get cramps even when it's not necessarily. Although it's a warmer day today. It, it is warm, yeah. Yeah, yep. it's a bit warmer. So Lower 90s today. Second down and eight. Here we go. Start of the fourth quarter. Here is DeQuazy following Robinson, and he gets across the 20 down to the 18. A gain of a couple more, so it's third down and long for Carl Albert, who now is going into that strong win. So now you would think what happens here if they don't pick up a first down, can they kick a field goal into the strong win from here? It looks pretty far from what we've seen so far. Yeah, they've hit their extra points, but they haven't been a thing of beauty. Let's say that. I mean, they haven't, like, just boomed through the uprights. Robinson and Bazell in the backfield with DeQuazy. Here is DeQuazy, and he is sacked back at the 30-yard line. Noah Rice on the sack, his second sack of the year, and that definitely puts him out of field goal range. Let's watch it again. Yeah, I'm not sure. They thought he, they had some deception there, and he just ran right into uh, Noah Rice, who got the sack. Well, it kind of fooled me for a moment. I thought he wanted to hand it off to Xavier Thomas coming across the middle, but he kept it and was brought down. So here's the fourth down and 15 play. they got to go all the way almost to the 12-yard line. DeQuazy, and now... Carl Albert, or make that Bishop McGinnis, calls a timeout, and they are one of their coaches is hot. Yeah, he's not too he's not too happy right now. Somebody was not in the right spot. I heard him through the window. I won't. <laughs> I don't want to know. Unfortunately, the players heard him right in their face. Exactly. They're like, yeah. hey, I, they're right there. They're handing him up close and personal. But it's a big play for them. They've got uh, fourth and. A bunch, 15 yards or whatever. There's a big play for, for McGinnis to get off the field. That sack was big, and I don't think they would have gone for the field goal anyway. They probably would have gone for it, but now it's really, if you convert this, uh, then McGinnis has probably had a blown coverage or something like that. That's why the coach is so upset. Coming up later in this quarter, we will have the OCCC play of the game, OCCC. O Triple C, the third C stands for college. 10.33 to play in the game. 21 20. Carl Albert on a fourth down play. Let's see what they draw up on this one. Next week, Carl Albert at home against Piedmont. Meanwhile, Bishop McGinnis will be at home back here against Western Heights, a game they should easily win. Here's the fourth down and 15 play. Bazell in the backfield. DeQuazy throwing it toward the end zone. Has a receiver. Caught. Touchdown, Carl Albert. I don't think you want to be around that coach who was upset just a second ago because he's not going to be happy with that. Quincy Hopkins, his second touchdown reception of the season, and it is a Homeland Grocery touchdown. Homeland Grocery, your homegrown advantage. Let's watch it again, Myron, right to the corner. What a great throw by DeQuazy. It was, and just got behind him and hauled it in. I mean, that's a killer there. When you've got him in fourth and long, he'd be bad enough to get the uh, first down. And he beat Noah Rice. Here's the field goal attempt, the point after attempt, excuse me, and it is up and it is good. The Titans add a touchdown, and they lead it by eight, 28-20. We'll take a break. We're back. After this, on the OCCC Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week.
game of the week, 28-20. The Titans out in front. Let's go downstairs to Ed Murray. Ed. A couple of things, Jack. Such a big play, not only just because it was fourth down, but before that touchdown, four of the five touchdowns were scored going to the north downwind. So that's the first Carl Albert touchdown into the wind. If McGinnis could have held them, they had the whole fourth quarter to go down. And speaking of lining up wrong, even on the sack, they were lined up wrong. And on the first touchdown drive of this third quarter, they were not lining up. The defensive plays are getting in a little late. The players are telling the coaches, get them in quicker. And they said, we're getting them in as fast as we can. So there's a little, little disagreement on the defensive side here of getting them lined up right on both of the touchdown drives. There you see Quincy Hopkins, a sophomore, who caught the touchdown to give him the eight-point lead. Reed DeQuazy, 7-9, 168 yards through the air tonight, and a couple of touchdown passes. He's been fabulous on fourth down so far. Well, and you hear some young players at uh, Carl Albert who will be playing this game for the next few years. you got a freshman getting a touchdown. you got a sophomore getting a touchdown there on that play. Uh, the future looks pretty good if you're a Carl Albert fan. Yeah, no doubt. Young squad for uh, Bishop McGinnis. These two, we, we could see these two in the state championship this year, next year, a couple <laughs> for the next several years. Yeah, this, well, the quarterback's really been impressive tonight. Taffy's just a junior. So, yeah, they've, uh, there's a reason that they're always in, in the mix. Here is Ethan Spickwack on the Ortho Central kickoff. Good kickoff into the win. Irish let it bounce, and here is Tarman on the return and he is up to about the 31 yard line so let's see what the Irish can put together down by eight so now they need a touchdown and a two point conversion which is playing a big role the missed point after attempts the first couple of touchdowns 10 minutes to play in the game in a fast fast moving game so you would think you may have maybe two possessions left but right now the way the game's being played Myron you may not this may this might be it. But it's a big drop because McCarl Albert's control the second half. Uh, this is only the second possession for them, and they haven't done much with it. So, yeah, this is a big drive for, for McGinnis, obviously. River Warren going to the air, and his pass is almost intercepted. In and out of the hands of Bazell. And it's second down and 10. Looking across the middle, and Bazell got a hand on it. A little bit high. Second down and 10 from the 31 for Bishop McGinnis. Here is the handoff. Goes to Taffy. Over the right side, breaks a couple of tackles. Up across the 40-yard line, he's going to pick up a first down. This is an Air National Guard first down. The Air National Guard... Part-time blue, full-time you. It's pretty good. I thought his hole was to the left. He went right and still found running room. <laughs> You're right. He closed quickly, but he got yeah. through there, didn't he? Brock Johnson on the tackle for Carl Albert. Irish bring a man in motion. Here's the handoff again to Taffy. And... He actually got loose down the sideline, down to the 40, and pushed out of bounds at the 35-yard line. He was should have been brought down in the backfield, but gets a huge game, but there is a flag on the far side of the field. It didn't look like there was much there, but he made, he made it into a big play, but get the feeling it might be coming back. Let's see. Well, the Irish are walking back, and yep. here you see River Warren, the quarterback. He was talking to one of his offensive coaches. And trip. A trip on Bishop McGinnis. So a huge play negated by the penalty. Still a heck of a run from uh, Taffy's part. I don't know if that played a part in him getting through there, but didn't look like there was much there to be had in terms of yardage. He found a way to find a hole and turn a big play. It's uh, just going to come back, though. Again, there in first and long yardage situations. They've been here before. A huge penalty, 15-yard penalty, first down and 25 for the Irish back at their 26-yard line. 
Now you see River Warren wanting the play. Not sure they're all on the same pace right now. Down to three seconds on the play clock. Here's the snap to Warren. Stepping up into the pocket. He will run with it, trying to get a block. Changes directions and up across the 35 to about the 36-yard line. And once again, Bazell is slow and getting up. Just looking, looking. This time he is running for yards. Kind of a slide there. So Warren picks up. Nine yards, second down and 16. Now back at the 35. They need to get across midfield for a first down. Bazell comes out of the game, suffering from some cramps. Four wideouts for Bishop McGinnis. Here's the snap. Over the middle. Has his receiver open for the first down. Down to the 45. Let's see where they give him the spot. They do. They get him... They give him down to the 44. It is an Air National Guard first down and a huge completion to Kellen Frell. He's good at just kind of find that soft spot in that zone, and the pass is delivered perfectly right in the pocket. Frell's first catch of the night, first down and 10 from the 46. Clock runs under eight minutes to go, 28-20. Irish need a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie it. Here is Warren. All sorts of trouble in the backfield, and he's sacked back at the 45-yard line. Sacked by Brock Johnson of the Titans. It looked like he wanted to scramble to his right, but Brock was waiting on Johnson. He's right there, says, uh, well, come, come to me. Ran right into him. Yeah. And he says, I'm going to go right, and there he is. Once again, a long series now. Second down and twenty. Long, uh, second down and twenty for the Irish. And Bishop McGinnis has to call a timeout. These coaches are not on the same page. So let's take a break as well. 7-11 left to go in the fourth quarter. 28-20. The Titans lead it. Welcome back, everyone, to Bishop McGinnis High School. The Irish calling the timeout. Offensive coordinator Ryan Stringer did not like what was going on, and so he had to take a timeout. They have a second down and 20 play coming up. They've been able to convert these when they get behind the chains. Now this is second and 20. You don't have to get it all at once. You can get, get 10. He has the win behind him. They're going to hand it off to Taffy, running to the short side of the field, and he's able to get a couple of yards, pushed out around midfield. It will be third down and probably, what, 16 or 17 now for Bishop McGinnis with a clock stop, 7.02 to go in the game. Where's Tarman? If you're a call out, you better keep an eye on him. Five wideouts in the game, and the Titans want a timeout. That's probably the hey. At number four, where is he? <laughs> and so Mike Dunn takes a timeout. little chess match going on here late in the 
late in the game. You know, talking about former players, is Jason Taylor over there, former Carl Albert Tight, now starting safety for Oklahoma State. Again, they've got the weekend off. I'm sure players kind of scattered, got to get to go home and go see their high school team play. This will be a game you definitely want to come. I mentioned Dominic Richardson for McGinnis. I'm sure he's uh, keeping an eye on this game. Coming up uh, after the game, we will have the GMC player of the game. Some good candidates so far tonight. You know, 28-20, Myron, this is a uh, for these two schools, kind of low scoring. The last low scoring game was back in 2018 in the season, 20 to 14, McGinnis losing to Carl Albert. Year before that, they played to a 21-6. Other than that, like last year, 56-35 in the regular season game, 33-21 in the state final. So not as high scoring as these two schools have had over the past couple of seasons. Yeah, he had some big time, uh, you know, on both sides offensively. I mean, J. Uh, J. Beyon Hunt would have been part of last year's team. He's at Arkansas now as a running back. I'm sure he had a big part of that, those points. Well, we talked about Reed DeQuazy, the quarterback for Carl Albert. He replaced Ben Harris, who only won 51 games as a quarterback. Uh, he had the nerve to lose two games. What's wrong with this game? <laughs> you know, and, and what, four state titles. Here is the third down play, and Warren's pass is – thrown out of bounds. He was looking for Frell. And so it's fourth down and long for Bishop McGinnis, and they're going to kick it away. Interesting call here. Although pinning Carl Albert deep is what you hope with the win. And you have a kicker who can kick it, Kilgallen, who's had some good punts earlier in the game. But well, you got to trust your defense to be able to get a stop and get the ball back. you got almost seven minutes to go. High snap, but Kilgallen has it, and he gets a good kick away. This is going to land inside the 10-yard line and actually bounce into the end zone. And Carl Albert may have got a little lucky because Xavier Thomas almost touched that. Well, it could have been almost down inside the five, too, so they're, they're, they're lucky they got to the end zone. So, uh, But you still got 646 left, and if, uh, if you're McGinnis, you got to say, okay, we got to stop, get the ball back. And they've shown throughout this game, McGinnis, that is, they can make plays in the passing game. So there's still a lot of time left for them to come back. They'll have to go for a two-point conversion, though, because they're down by eight. And the Irish have only one timeout remaining, as you see there. The yellow bar under the score represents the timeouts. Here is the snap to DeQuazy. Calls his own number. Keeps it in the field of play. Keeps the clock running. Picks up three yards, second down. Actually, they'll give him one more, second down and six, so a gain of four for DeQuazy. He might want to be careful with that football, swinging it back over somebody's head. That's Somebody's going to try to take a swipe at that and knock it out of the arm. He's a good player, though. He's made some nice runs for them. Very smart quarterback, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Made yeah. some very smart runs tonight. And you could tell he's already thinking, I'm not going out of bounds. Even yeah. though he's a good seven, eight yards from the sideline, he was not going to get close to going out of bounds. Clock runs, just over six to play. The Irish need the football back. DeQuazy is going to be stopped and tackled for a loss, losing about four yards on that one, so third down and ten. Good pursuit that time by number ten, Brennan Chumo of the Irish right there, the junior, 6'1", 172. Yep, just kind of stumbled at that low snap, and but good pursuit by... I, I said Chumo, also Noah Rice, of course. Yep. He's been on a bunch of plays tonight. Boy, hadn't he? On both sides of the football. Big third down for the Irish defensively. With the clock running. DeQuazy looking for somewhere to run. Now reverses fields, cuts it back up. There's a flag thrown back at the line of scrimmage. He won't pick up the first down. It's likely a hold, you would think. A hold or a block in the back. And let's see what referee Doug Crop gives us. Nonetheless, it's going to be fourth down, and they're going to have to kick it away. Holding on Carl Albert. 
I would decline this. Would you not decline this? Oh yeah, you just uh, yeah. It'd be fourth down and it'd be fourth down and about eight. They're not going for this. They're going to punt it. I mean, they're not going for it. It is declined, as you see there. So the clock runs with about five minutes to go. They will kick it away. Back deep. Paul Tarman for Bishop McGinnis standing back at his 45, and he steps up to about the 47. Here is Trey Washington to kick it. Good snap. And he gets a line drive kick away. It takes a Carl Albert bounce and will be down to around the 40-yard line. So the Irish have 60 yards to go to have a chance to tie it. Good kick that time by the freshman kicker, Trey Washington. Yeah, uh, and luckily from Bishop McGinnis' the stand, it didn't roll even further because you really want your return guy to get there and cover that ball and not let it get any roll. But they're in good field position with a lot of time left. Playbook's open. If you call Albert, you need to stop. And we still have not had a turnover yet. No. 439 to play. River Warren. Mike Taffy behind him. They bring a man in motion. This is Frell. Here's the play action. Warren to the near sideline. Caught by Frell across midfield to the 45. Tackled at the 43 of first down. It is an Air National Guard first down for the Irish. Clock momentarily stops. Four and a half to play. Let's watch it again. Yeah, just kind of rolling right. Or actually left, I guess. Nice tackle, nice catch. They're moving. Clock is running, 4-15. Irish look to the sideline. Get in the play from Ryan Stringer. They move Taffy behind Warren. Here is the handoff. And the running back gets it down to the 40. It's a gain of two. Second down and eight with the clock continuing to run. Yep, we're under four minutes now. Still a lot of time left. Tackle made by Cody Longstreet. Actually leading tackler on the team. First time we've called him tonight. Sophomore linebacker. Second down and eight. The snap to Warren. Looking left. Throws it. It is intercepted in and out of the hands of Tarman. And here go the Titans down to the 40 and returned and pushed out at the 35-yard line. The interception made by Tashawn James. Well, that's the first one. Clean game up to that point. And really, the ball just uh, not a bad throw. Just catch you know, a little inside, but you get your hands on it. Don't catch it clean. And bounced right to James. He was perfect position to make the INT. First mistake of the night, and it comes with 3.17 to play in the game. So the Titans take over. Irish with one timeout remaining. Now, if you begin, you can't hang your head here on defense. You still can get a stop and get the ball back. Here is Bazell running left, cuts it back up. Across the 35, down to the 34. It's a gain of three. We'll give them two, actually. Second down and eight. Keeping the ball on the ground, obviously, now. Yep, yeah, but you're going to take this play clock as far down to zero without getting to zero as possible. Let's see when he snaps this ball. we still got 14 seconds on the play clock. Down to 10 now on the play clock. Five. And he snaps it with two. And he takes it himself around the left side. Picks up a couple more. And it will be third down and five now for Carl Albert with just over two minutes to play. We're going to have to choose our player of the game here, Myron, really quick. 
we got some candidates. At least we don't have to say who, who who's made a play. <laughs> <laughs> right now I'm leading toward Buddy Bazell. Bazell's been pretty good. He's been a consistent quarterback. Reed dequazy has been good. Second, third down and six. Under two to play. DeQuazy gets a Carl Albert first down across the 25. That's a killer right there. You're under two minutes now. They've got another fresh set of downs. Air National Guard first down. The Air National Guard part-time blue, full-time U. They move the change. Chains. Clock runs 142 and counting. We see some McGinnis fans. First down and 10 for Carl Albert. Here's the handoff to who's probably going to be our player of the game, Buddy Bazell, and he runs, actually runs out of bounds. You didn't want to see that. but I believe with 115 left, we could probably give Buddy Bazell the player of the game. As a couple of touchdowns on the ground, some big runs. Yeah, he's been uh, that last drive. He goes wildcat the last three or four plays. Yeah. Had the pass broken up defensively that prevented a huge play for Bishop McGinnis. Clock has stopped, 115 to go, two, uh, second down and seven at the 21. Two timeouts for Carl Albert, although they don't need them. One for Bishop McGinnis, they haven't used it yet. And here is the handoff right back up the middle. And now they're going to use their final timeout on a third down and long play coming up for the Titans. And they're going to run it again. They're going to throw it. So they won't be able to stop the clock again. And will they even have to run the fourth down play? They'll have third down. It'll be awfully close whether they'll have to run the fourth down play. Probably will. So McGinnis could get the back uh, ball back, Myron, with probably what under maybe 30 seconds or a little maybe. bit less. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, talk about the O Triple C play of the game, and with the game in doubt, 28-20. We chose this play as the play of the game. Bishop McGinnis with it. And the pass intercepted by yeah. Tayshawn James as our O Triple C play of the game. And he possibly preserved the victory for Carl Albert on the only mistake of the game by either team. Yeah, because they're driving there. Plenty of time left on the clock. They could run it, they could throw it. And this essentially ended the game with this pick, gave uh, Carl Albert the football back, and they need a first down. They got that first down, and now they're basically going to run the clock out. And unfortunate for Paul Tarman, who's had one heck of a game and just could not come up with that pass. And for ta uh, Tayshawn James, he was right there to make the pick. Yeah, yeah, he was uh, the old tip drill. And, yeah, Tarman, he's uh, done it as a receiver, as a return guy. Uh, played well for them. But unfortunately for him, I'm sure he'll be uh, remembering that. You get your hands on the ball as a receiver, you like to hang on to it. So here we go, third down and seven. One ten left to play. No timeouts left for the Irish. Winner takes sole first place of District 2 here in Class 5A. DeQuazy looking to pass, throws it toward the end zone, and it is incomplete. He was looking for Xavier Thomas. The Irish wanted offensive pass interference. Are you surprised by the call? Yeah, I'm surprised they threw it out. The fact he rolled out, you know, you can eat up more time on the clock. Uh, now, I think they probably thought that McGinnis thought they would never throw it. Yeah. But they could give them credit for being disciplined enough to uh, have a guy back there. And he and threw actually, it in a triple coverage. Yeah, yeah, actually a couple guys back there, yeah. yeah. So, But it stops the clock is what it does. And now it's fourth down and seven, and now – you would think they would have to try to get this first down because they will give McGinnis yeah, the, plenty of time. They'll stop the clock on chain of possession if they yeah. don't pick it up. So, Bazell to the left of DeQuazy. Bad snap, and I believe Carl Albert may have called a timeout. Delay. Nope, delay a game called against Carl Albert. So instead of fourth down and seven, now it's 
Fourth down and 12. You know, if nothing else, you don't get the first. Can you pick up a few yards to give them further to go? Something across the middle. Well, but again, if you don't, when they when they stop, the clock's going to stop, change possession. So that really doesn't matter, I guess. But and there you see Mike Dunn, extremely upset about the delay of game. Something you did not want to take here with 103. Here is the late handoff, and this is going nowhere to Bazell. And so the change of possession not only goes back to the Irish, but they actually have decent field position. They will have it starting at the 25. With 58 seconds to go, can they get the offense a touchdown and a possible two-point try to tie it and send it into overtime? Well, I mentioned Carl Alvin ran the hook and lateral last week to help come back to beat Guthrie on the road. If you got something you've been holding, some play you've been working on, this is the time to use it. First down and 10 for River Warren. Looking to pass over the middle. Has his receiver caught. That is Noah Rice. What a go-to guy he's been so far tonight. First down, an Air National Guard first down from the 44. They go quickly. 50 seconds to play. Five wideouts. And Carl Albert, I believe, has taken a timeout. Hey, those McGinnis fans, okay, they're up, they're up against the rail now. They were leaving early. <laughs> they stopped. Let's watch the last play to get the huge gain for a first down. Rice right there wide open. Yeah. And remember the clock stops on a first down until they move the chain. Titans take the timeout. They're second of the half. They have one remaining. Not sure why they would need it if. Well, this is the time that they're taking that said, well, why would you stop the clock? Well, they're like, you're talking to high school kids, young kids, look excited. You want to make sure everybody's on the same page. What, what are we doing on defense? What's your responsibilities? And they know the Irish are going to go fast, fast, fast. Yes. Er, yes. Yes, yes. Don't let anybody get behind you. But if you're Bishop McGinnis, you, I mean, this is uh, about the best you could hope for when they picked up that first down where you thought the game was going to be over. Yep. First down and 10 from the 44. Warren takes a snap, dropping back to pass, being chased out of the pocket. He will take it, and he will run with it across midfield, gets the first down, and out of bounds, stops the clock near the 40-yard line. Another Air National Guard first down. Tremendous effort that time, and is there a flag late on the play? There's a flag at the end of the play, and this could be against the Irish. Well, is it a late hit, though, out of bounds, though, because it's on the sideline? What are we talking about? Noah Rice, or make that Paul Tarman, raised his hands as if it were on the Irish. And they're walking back. Illegal push in the back by Bishop McGinnis. Wow. Well, and it had to happen late after he'd already picked up the yard. So that's that's what makes it. There was nobody on that side of the field. So that's one of those that's a killer. Not that any penalty is necessary, but. Let's watch right at the end of the play. Right there. Wow. That seems pretty ticky I was going to say, I was going to say, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty ticky tacky. Let, let the players decide the game on the field. That first down and, or second down and four. Actually, first down and four is what the chains say. Warren takes a snap, steps up into the pocket, looking downfield, still looking, goes deep. Has a receiver. It is tipped up in the air and almost <laughs> caught. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it is incomplete. This was Andrew Smith who had a chance at it. Let's watch this again, Myron. My goodness. Well, uh, River does a good job kind of getting away and then just showing off the arm. Looked like it might be picked off right 
there, but it went oh. right through his arms and hit him right in the chest. Oh, my goodness, he's not going to sleep tonight. To Sean James, who had the pick in the last series, almost had that one to seal the victory, and Andrew Smith almost had a touchdown. Second down play now for the Irish with 27 to play. Pass is caught over the middle, and a huge hit, and his oh. helmet comes off. And the pass is caught by Noah Rice, and a flag is now thrown. I got to admit, what's the flag here? Because it didn't look like an, a in the head. The hit was on by Tashawn James. But what's the flag? I mean, I know it's on him, but I, it looked like a pretty clean hit, maybe. Just because your helmet comes off doesn't make it a... Uh, he wasn't a defenseless receiver. He's running at him. Unless it was taunting after the play, maybe. Personal foul after the play. Because if that is, it was... Where did the play end up? In? Let's watch the replay. The play ended up around the 30-yard line. So let's watch it after the play. There. I think that's a leak. Well, I mean, they're like going to get him with, with targeting. Shoulder. Yeah, uh, he led with a... Sh they're going to get him with targeting, but it looked like he led him into the shoulder, but he did lower the crown of the helmet. So he did lower the crown of the helmet, which is something the referees always look for, whether it's into the shoulder pad or into the helmet. Wow. Targeting on James. Add 15 to the end of the play. This is getting good. Well, it depends who, who side you're on. <laughs> Exactly. If your right. car is not too good, if your McGinnis is great. That takes the football down to the 10 yard line. 21 seconds to go. No timeouts for the Irish. But they're at the 10. <laughs> and James stays into the game after the targeting call. Let's see what the Irish can draw up. Here is Warren looking toward the end zone. Lofts it up toward the corner. It is caught. Touchdown, Bishop McGinnis. A Homeland Grocery touchdown. Paul Tarman on the redemption reception. Now they need two-point conversion to tie it. Just a little corner route, gets behind him, and looked like he might get there to uh, break it up. But what a pass and catch by Warren and, and Tarman. Tarman. Yeah. Good coverage by Demarion Brown. And now a timeout has been called on the field. I said the Irish had no timeouts, but well, the referees had, signaled, referees had signaled a timeout. I guess Tarman made up for the uh, the block on the sideline. Late block, whatever they called it. But uh, Okay, offensive coordinator, what are you calling on this one? Well, you're going to throw for it. I don't think you're going to run it. Uh, you know, you like to put two receivers, say, to one side, maybe cross them. Yeah. You know, if, if it were a basketball game, we'd say switch. But you'd be amazed how many times guys never, I mean, at the, even at the collegiate level, don't do that. And they get confused who's got who. We haven't called Taffy's name very much in the second half. No. And I, and I say you don't run it. I mean, that's obviously good. he's a pretty good player. So, but uh, What a game by uh, Paul Tarman tonight. Seven maybe you run Wildcat with, Taff with Taffy. Do you do yeah. that? Of course, now I see the quarterback out there. Paul Tarman, seven reception, 100 yards, a touchdown, two-point conversion. Taffy is in the backfield behind River Warren. This to tie it and send it to overtime. And now Mike Dunn running out onto the field calls his final timeout. Chess match continues. You go back to the play when Carl Albert had it on third down and threw it into the end zone to stop the clock. Yeah, that was a, that was a big gamble. Uh, to, to, like I said, when he rolled out, I'm thinking he's just going to I did too. Yeah. not run out of bounds. So kind of lay down, yeah. Yeah, kind of lay down or whatever. Keep that, you know, run as much time as possible instead of just handing the ball off in the pile and then maybe take five seconds. Yep. But when he threw it, that was uh, 
I mean, the only thing I can see is, is, is you're thinking there's no way they're going to throw it and you catch them off guard, but they had three people back there. Ed Murray down on the sidelines, and Ed, I'm sure the Bishop McGinnis sidelines is uh, the attitude has definitely changed here. Down here. I, it's very electric down here. The palms and cheers are all down here. President is down here. You can hear them down here. It is electric as we go for two. Unbelievable. Carl Albert McGinnis coming down to this. Here's the two point conversion. Tarman in motion. Here is the quarterback. Does he get in? The ball is loose. Who has it? Now, does the guy fumbling have to catch, recover it? Is that a collegiate rule? Irish say they have recovered it, and they do. They convert the two-point conversion, and we are tied <laughs> at 28. We just thought this game was going to end early. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable drive with under a minute to go, led by River Warren. And there you see Vincent Shivers coming out of the bottom of the pile with the football. And nobody's going to take it from him. He said, he said, I got it. I'm taking this home with me. 16 seconds remaining, 28-28. Wow. Here it is again, Myron. Just a quarterback run all the way, and there it goes flying in the air. And somebody from Carl Albert had a chance to get it there. Can't make out that number. Yeah. Maybe number five right there. E.J. Taylor had it, had a chance early on. And then and there you see big number 74, Junior, 6'3", 245, and everyone's favorite player right now. Probably his first points he's ever scored unless he's placed a tight end or something. River Warden, what a drive engineered by the sophomore quarterback. He's 15 to 25 tonight, 250 yards, a couple of touchdowns. And you never know, we have 16 seconds to play. That's a lot of time. Yeah. Well, like I said, I mentioned those McGinnis people that left after they got the first down. I'm like, oh, they all came back. They, they, yeah, they, they all stopped came back. at the railing down yep. at the fence. So here we go. The kickoff by Kilgallen, and he will send it into the end zone. It will be a touchback, and so the Titans will have 16 seconds to go, and what do you do here? Probably send it to overtime and hope for the best, right? Yeah, they'll, they'll drop everybody back, maybe give the ball to Bazell, see if he can do something special for you, but you don't want to get too tricky. Third interception. biggest thing you got is to make sure you guys say, hey, we're, just, we're going to overtime. We didn't lose the game. We're just going to overtime. Yeah. Because it can feel like you lost the game because of uh, you seem to have it in control. Well, we had James as our player of the game, and now we got to choose another player of the game, depending on what happens here. Low snap. The handoff to Bazell. And he's running left. And he's going to be up across to around the 35-yard line. It looks like he got out of bounds there. It'll be a first down, an Air National Guard first down, but only seven seconds remaining. So we're going to overtime. Barring some miraculous last play by the Titans, the Irish, their secondary is back at their own 40-yard line. Yeah, they're deep good 30, 20 to 30 yards off the ball. They may be in the concession stand almost. I mean, they're <laughs> so deep. There's the what might be the final play of the game here in the fourth quarter before we go to overtime. Bazell right back up the middle. He's shy of the first down of the clock. will head to zero. And this game is going to overtime. An unbelievable drive to tie it up for Bishop McGinnis. Let's take a break on the OCCC Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week. What a one it is. We're back with the overtime after this.
Welcome back, everyone, to Bishop McGinnis High School. We are tied at 28, heading to overtime. And the Titans won the toss and elected to play defense first in high school. The team who wins the toss elects offense or defense first. You always obviously want to play defense yeah. first in football. And we start on the 10-yard line. And each team has a chance. Yeah, you play defense because you know what the other's done, whether it's a field goal, touchdown, what you have to do. So I would think you see a lot of Brady Bazell here. Maybe they, I don't know if they go wildcat, but uh, I think you see a lot of him. What a drive by River Warren putting together that drive with under a minute to play to get the touchdown to Tarman and then the two-point conversion. And here we go in overtime, first down and 10. Here is the handoff to Taffy right back up the middle, and he's across the five-yard line, down to about the four. So let's say it just a gain of five. So second down and goal now for Bishop McGinnis. Haven't called his name a lot in the second half, but you might see a lot of him here in the overtime period. Yeah, yeah, you'll see a lot of him, a lot of the running backs. Well, Taffy for McGinnis, Bazell for Carl Albert. The handoff again to Taffy, right back up the middle, untouched touchdown. Bishop McGinnis, and they take the lead. Made it look easy. It is a Homeland Grocery touchdown here in overtime, 34-28. And they'll try the point after attempt. Which has been a mystery to say the least, but uh, boy, big hole. He just burst through there. Another touchdown by Mike Taffy. And here is the point after attempt. Kilgallen will try it. They have not had a good snap on the PATs all night long. They haven't gotten one off. Their first two were into the dirt into the grass. This one is good. The kick is blocked by Carl Albert. That is huge. Once again, the PATs disappointing to Bishop McGinnis. Well, that's what uh, you wonder would that come to play. And is this to Sean James who gets the block? It sure is. It actually looked like he, they got the hole down, pretty good foot into it, but he just came free on that left side over there. What a second half by Tashawn James. He gets the interception that you thought would seal the victory. Then he comes back and gets a targeting call, but does not get kicked out of the game. Stays in the game and probably makes the most uh, the most important block. Well, was he not on the on the what should have been an interception? It was an interception, yeah. yeah went yep. right through his hands. <laughs> and then the beginner's player hit him in the chest. Mike Taffy, 27 rushes, 142 yards, four touchdowns for the running back for Bishop McGinnis. Here we go for Carl Albert. Reed DeQuazy, the quarterback. Bazell, the running back. This is DeQuazy. He will keep it, and he gets a yard. Tackle made by Shivers, the big nose guard for Bishop McGinnis, number 74. Second down and goal now for Carl Albert. They have to score a touchdown. Yeah, those snaps are, are not helping when they're basically rolling back down the ground. Again, this knows what they've got to do. We'll see if they can get it done. Bazell to the right of DeQuazy. DeQuazy following Bazell. Is he going to keep it himself? He does. At the five, touchdown, Reed DeQuazy to tie it. And there's just a point after attempt away from winning it. He followed Bazell. Yeah, that's a good block on that right side. Untouched. What a great call here by Carl Albert. Following right Buddy Bazell. Good block on the outside, and he found the pylon and gets in there. So he, he doesn't look like he's really pressing it, but <laughs> no. he just he's faster than what you think. He looks like he's running half speed, doesn't he? Yeah. And now a timeout has been called. Yeah. They each get a timeout in the overtime period, and so Carl Albert will take theirs. The kicker is Aiden Wood. And 
he's made his extra points, but they haven't been boomers. I, the, the last one was better, but the first two, you know, the goal post is 10 feet off the ground. He probably went 12 feet off the ground. Through the, you know, we got there. That's all you want to do. But uh, if you're McGinnis, you got to if you come off the edge or whatever, or if you didn't get it high enough, if you can get a hand on it. So Aiden Wood, there you see him, number 62. He's a junior, and they didn't even list him for me as a kicker. I didn't even have him down as the PAT guy. I had someone else, Jacob Eddy. I had Ethan Spickwack. Well, I saw him in warm-ups. I said, man, that's a big kicker because, you know, <laughs> he's doing the whole you just line up, you take two steps to the left, you know, how they all line up and do the same thing. Yeah. That's a big kicker, man. So here he goes. The holder is Xavier Thomas. The Irish need a miss or a block to send it into another overtime. The hold is good. The kick is up. And the Titans have won it. Heck of a finish. Heck of a game. The Titans have come to Bishop McGinnis, and in overtime, they defeat the Irish 35-34. You got your money's worth you came to this one. We told you the two-story programs were setting up for a great game, and uh, wow, what, what can you say? Oh, it's a great game, man, great game. And somehow I think they'll probably they'll beat again somewhere down the playoff. Oh, they will definitely meet again, no doubt about it. The big man with the point after to win it for Carl Albert. Bazell, what a great game. We gave the player of the game to, to, uh, to Sean James for the interception. He got the block on the point after, so you know what? Yeah. we got to stay with him as the player of the game yeah. despite the targeting call. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's uh, – and, and I'll be honest, I'd, I'd like to – yeah, sometimes what is targeting? It was a big hit. The helmet went flying. But to me, hit him with more shoulder than anything. But uh, in any case, it worked out. If you're a Carl Albert uh, fan or whatever, they win another close ball game. And they are, I won't say they're peaking because you got a lot of season left, but they're obviously playing a lot better than they were at the beginning of the year. And, and they have a schedule ahead of them that really uh, uh, plays well. They, ha they have Piedmont next week, Western Heights. They go to Woodward, and then they close out with Lot and Ike. So you would think, realistically, they could probably win the rest of their games. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I said, it's Reed Duquesne there. He's a, he's a good young quarterback himself. And makes plays with his arm as well as with his, uh, with his legs. Well, our player of the game is number 13, to Sean James, and here is the play of the game at the time. The interception that we thought at the time would seal the victory for Carl Albert. The Irish get the football back, and now James, after the touchdown, he does this. Blocks Comes the from the end, blocks the point after attempt, and that proved to be the game winner after the PAT by the Titans after the touchdown to win it. So the point after attempts really telling in this game for the Irish. And I know Ed Murray is probably down in the middle somewhere, and we're waiting on whether they're ready to go. And uh, But, again, uh, to Sean James, what, what a story he was tonight. Only a junior, 6'2", 180. Uh, I know Ed is down there with the head coach. And, Ed, if you are ready, take it away with the head coach, Mike Dunn. Well, Jack, we wanted to give a time, and i got to hand it to Coach Dunn here. We were too close to the McGinnis team over there, so we had to relocate to this side of the field. There's so much respect between these two teams. Ho-hum, just another Carl Albert McGinnis game. No question. No question. That's how we like it. <laughs> you, were, you were telling your team, that's why you work on block kicks every practice. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I've been a lot of, a lot of programs, and... Nobody works on special teams like we do. Nobody works on blocking kicks. Nobody works on protecting kicks like we do. So, man, just a testament to these kids going out, grinding, and working hard every single day at it. We sweat, we sweat the small stuff. And that's what these guys have done the whole time. Friday night rivals, folks, in 5A. It's all about Carl Albert and McGinnis. And, guys, I know you've got 16 trophies in your trophy case, a lot bigger than this. But for Coach Dunn, this is his first Carl Albert McGinnis trophy right there.
Jack. All right, thank you very much, Ed. An excited Carl Albert Titans team. They should be. They come in. A fabulous ball game between these two teams like we thought it would be. And the Titans prevail 35-34. And um, like you said, Myron, we expect to see these two teams play each other again in the playoff, if not the state championship game. Yeah. Um, again, it's obviously at this point they lost. You know, we thought turnovers would be a big issue. Well, they had the one pick that they threw, but they still got the overtime. But the extra points. Could never got those through in the first quarter as the game went along. Ended up costing them uh, a chance to maybe win the game. Let's look at some of the final stats uh, from tonight before we talk about next week's game. There you see it, just even all across the board. 387 total yards to 359. Uh, 256 through the air for uh, the Irish and River Warren. 169 for DeQuazy. Uh, 190 on the ground for the Titans compared to 131 for Bishop McGinnis. Just even all around. Next week, we are on the road in Bethany as the Broncos host the Newcastle Racers at 7 o'clock in a 4A matchup. Uh, should be an exciting game there with some playoff implications uh, next week with Bethany and Newcastle. Yeah, those are always two really good programs. Racers and Broncos getting after it. And uh, so this, if it can live up to this, we're living right because this was a great game. I don't No matter who you were pulling for, you had to enjoy this football game. Yeah, fantastic. All of us would like to take a moment to thank the wonderful sponsor partners, the Oklahoma City Community College, GMC, McIntyre Law, and Wade's RV, who through their contributions to the program make these games possible for you viewers at home. We'd also like to thank our great sponsor supporters for their contributions to our 2021 Friday Night Rivals telecast, Oklahoma Ford Dealers, Homeland Grocery, Norman Regional Hospital, Ortho Central, and the Oklahoma National Guard. We'd also like to thank our high schools who participated tonight, the Carl Albert High School Titans, and our host, the Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School. For Ed Murray and Myron Patton, I'm Jack Tamer. Once again, our final score, 35-34. Have a great night, everyone. <laughs>